Greetings, everyone, <coughs> and welcome to Saturday Night Insanity. Woo. I have gas. <laughs> Excellent. Um, sadly, I, 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 Skin Slip is not able to join us this week because uh, she's having some uh, tooth problems, essentially, up, and fuckers. isn't feeling too well. So uh, we wish her well. Hope you feel better. Hope you're at least watching, maybe, and, you know. <laughs> on the mend. Also, also, she has had a lot of trouble sleeping because oh, yes. of the tooth pain. I can relate. Sleep, sleep but, uh, deprived yeah. and in pain. So, get well soon. Hopefully, we'll see you back here. Next I don't week. know. I don't think like I just had my teeth removed. And now I'm having these issues, right? But all of because them. I just had that happened to me. Mm -hmm. I still have a lot of the pain medication that they gave to me, so I can just take that pain medication be okay. True. I don't yeah. know what her situation is when it comes to yeah. medications. So, you know, maybe she doesn't have enough to, you know, take it all the time, and so she's just kind of suffering through I just realized you guys could see there, so I'll just move my pickups down there. So you get... Oh. Now so we know exactly what you yeah. got. <laughs> Thank you, JL. A lifetime supply Thank of you. Doritos. I yep. knew it. You know, the <laughs> secret is out. Uh, where did Cass go? <laughs> like, Cass was sitting there this the whole week, time. Cass will be replaced by a bunch of cardboard boxes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> He was there like a minute ago when we were doing the pre-show, and then he just left. What the hell, Cass? The hell. Anyway. The hell. All right. <laughs> Ugh. So how we doing? Good. Other than the annoying tired, here. but otherwise good. I, I mean, I yeah. did get a gigantic thing. Again, a second one. I bet that works. That works really well with your sore teeth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can't really eat these right now. So, no. but you can kind of suckle the last one cream. of these that I got though lasted like two fucking weeks. It's, there's just when you think like there's no way I'm not going <laughs> to eat all this in a few days. You're like, there's still more. There's still more. Yes. Correct. Um, yeah, it's pretty cool. Oh, yeah, solid content PC. We actually... Wow! Uh, You're an idiot! I still haven't put the delay back on the soundboard, have I? Anyway, um, yes, we used to use Discord, but we found it's got some annoying, uh aspects where you can't really adjust things too much uh this is cast which is a new, slightly newer uh streaming video conferencing service uh one thing i like about it is you can actually swap the cameras around quite uh quite easily and i like that so you can just kind of move everybody around but um it's not perfect but yeah. currently there is no perfect service for this. Yeah. It's uh it, it seems to be also the more stable for video conferencing than Discord. Discord was mainly was originally made to be primarily message boarding, like a message board community, and video seems to have been kind of added as an afterthought. Um for audio <laughs> it's fine. Like if you're just doing an audio thing yeah. to have additional audio people. works great on but, Discord. Um, the video works okay, and if it's all you've got, it's fine. But cast is free, um, so I mean, you can try it out. We tried a few different things before uh, settling on cast. I just found that cast gives us seems to give us the more consistent video quality. Discord sometimes uh, just devolves into pixelated garbage sometimes for no reason. And there's Damn. nothing you can do about it. Cast, Discord is random. Cast just seems to be a lot more uh, stable. You have no control. You have very little yeah. control over Discord. And it's also, like... uh, Cast just seems to have better video and uh, like more consistent uh, video and audio quality. So it's you know better for something like this. So yeah, 
It's good stuff. <clears throat> yeah, what I've done is, uh, this is not what you're seeing is just the video portion, actually. On my screen, there's two other columns on either side. One is the list of participants, and the other is, there's actually a chat in cast as well, so anybody who's in there can chat in there. But, uh, but yeah, it's, it's good. And, um, I don't know if you've followed our show at all. We've been doing it for quite a while. Um, we used to just do it in Google Hangouts. <laughs> and then uh, when we switched to Twitch, we uh, kind of mixed things up a little bit and fiddled with the layout. Now we can actually have the, the chat window, which is quite nice, uh, which we couldn't have before. And, uh, yeah, so there you go. Yeah. Hope that helps. Um yeah. I love this show. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Gur. Um, all right, so we got fair whack of news this week. I guess we should probably get into that. Uh, our good old uh, resident New York news hound, Raptor Rivera, has pulled together all of all of what's uh, you know big in the world of geekiness this week and movies and everything. So he starts off by saying, Quarantine, day 237. Saw an old decaying lady in my tub today. No mask, no gloves, wanted a hug. She had to go. Okay. <laughs> Just do it! Make your dreams come true! I am doing it, Shia. Anyway, uh, trailers. Trailers this week. Uh, we had an official trailer for the HBO Max series. Oh, everybody and their dog was sending this to me. I still haven't watched it. Uh, Looney Tunes cartoons. Yes, a new Looney Tunes series that uh, I think we, we heard about a while ago, and uh, it's finally ready to launch. Uh, Bugs Bunny, Daffy Duck, Porky Pig, and all the other Looney Tunes go on a bunch of misadventures in a giant series of eight-minute episodes. So it's like it's like the old shorts. It's like the old shorts. <laughs> yeah, I don't have the Did Twitch audio that? going. So. Thank you. The series premieres May 27th. Yes, I just stopped dead in my tracks and <laughs> sighed despondently. Uh, official trailer for the documentary series Disney Galley, The, Mon the Mandalorian. This one I really want to check out. A behind-the-scenes look at the making of the John Favreau-created Star Wars show. Yeah, definitely uh, down for that. And um, I don't know, isn't there already a Blu-ray on the way for The Mandalorian? I think there is. Um, no idea if this show is going to be included on that, but it would be nice if it was. Um, official trailer for the HBO Max series Love Life. A university student lives without the fear of consequences. A legal guardian discovers that her seemingly perfect client is not who they appear to be. Starring Anna Kendrick, the series premieres May 27th. Hmm. Official trailer for The Shudder, original film Z. No, it's not about me. Uh, a family find themselves terrorized by their eight-year-old son's imaginary friend. I swear, the imaginary friend is not me. Uh, Co-written and directed by Brandon Christensen, who also directed 2017's Stillborn. Cool. Interesting. Creepy. Yeah. It's totally I, him, by the way. I remember there <laughs> there was an old <laughs> DC Comics horror anthology series. I remember there was uh, a story in it. If you Actually, I did a video about it, um, as well as several other things, called Horror Comics of My Youth. And this one in particular was about this little boy who had an imaginary friend named Nick. And Nick was not an imaginary friend. He actually existed. And uh, so his father was like an abusive father and kept and one day got so tired of hearing about this imaginary friend that he he beat the little boy, like got out the belt and whipped him. And then Nick, being not so imaginary, well... Retaliated. Wow! You're an idiot! Alright, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, um, it was very good. Very, you know, one of those good uh, sort of Twilight Zone anthology series type things. It was great to see the dickish father get his comeuppance. Actually, I think yeah. the mum was kind of a bitch, too. 
But, uh, but yeah, anyway, so Nick basically, I think, killed the parents, and then the kid went up for adoption and got a foster family of, like, half lizard, half human people. And they are like, I think we're going to be very happy here. Because <laughs> Nick was kind well, of a lizard didn't creature. didn't go where I expected it yeah. at all. <laughs> dick. No, not, not Dick. Nick. That was his name. It was Nick. <laughs> anyway, um... Official trailer for the drama thriller The Color Rose. An A-list girl clique starts a secret cult in their small religious town. Ooh, goody. Religious cults. Always fun. Each of them embody one of the seven deadly sins. It all goes horribly wrong as they go missing one by one. Oh, interesting. Um, gotta love a good religious cult mystery thriller horror thing. Um... Official trailer for the biographical drama series *The Great*: A royal woman living in a rural Australia during, or, sorry, rural Austria during the 18th century is forced to choose between her own personal happiness and the future of Russia. What the fuck are you doing, Stout? <laughs> Getting the loopy, apparently. Okay, so I'm just you... like the Jello. It jiggles. <laughs> it jiggles. <laughs> Painkillers are oh, fun. It's gonna be a weird episode. Yep. Uh, <laughs> who's forced to choose between her own personal happiness and the future of Russia when she marries an emperor, played by Nicholas Holt. The series premieres on May fifteenth on Hulu. Unbelievable! This guy says he's a Star Wars fan, but he doesn't even have the Ewok movies. Yes, those are yeah, the best yeah. ones. Our, uh, cult leaders. How can you Wars. call yourself a real Star Wars fan? Unbelievable! If you don't have the <laughs> Ewok from Austria in Star Wars. Unbelievable! Uh, official trailer for the comedy horror bit. A transgender teenage girl on summer vacation in Los Angeles fights to survive after she falls. In with four queer feminist vampires who try to rid the city's streets of predatory men. Wow, that's that's like let's put all the SJW agenda stuff into one movie. <laughs> oh my god, it's, I it's, feel like that was designed was say, specifically to piss off those yes, right? Of, like Star Wars it's fanboys. SJW it's like check, Sharkado. check, check, oh check. God. This should anger all of them. <laughs> <laughs> and i hope that it's a really good movie too at the heart of it like and that it's like fun and yeah, yeah. And now 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 would be the time for the the, the dick yeah <laughs> <laughs> vagina okay anyway tired of all these movies with their sjw agenda i'm like well uh, yeah that kind of is a movie with you're right that that movie actually does have an SJW. That one, agenda. yes, but yeah. you know. <laughs> pointing it out is kind of stupid because it's on purpose. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'll check that out. That sounds like fun. Um, official trailer for the Netflix series Hollywood. A group of aspiring. Oh, here it is. There it is. <laughs> There we go. Okay. <laughs> Official trailer for the Netflix series Hollywood. A group of aspiring actors and filmmakers in post-World War II Hollywood try to make it big no matter the cost. All right. Cool. And that's all the trailers in movie and TV news. In a recent interview... Wow, that's some interesting news. <laughs> In a recent interview with Vanity Fair, filmmaker Denis Villeneuve explained why his highly anticipated adaptation of Dune will be split into two films. He says, I would not agree to make this adaptation of the book with one single movie, says Villeneuve. The world is too complex. It's a world that takes its power in details. Yes, I think that's wonderful. That's great. Um, and the, the book itself is, is very clearly divided into, like, several sections, like, several key sort of parts of the story um, where time passes between them. So, I mean, there's there's some, you know, pretty easy break points where they can split things up um, and hopefully give the story time enough to, to breathe. I hope that each of those movies is, like, pushing three hours, honestly. Like, just really dive in there and give it some depth and, you know, let us live in that world for a little while. Um, I'm really looking forward to those. I love Dune. Dune's great. Um, during a recent Q&A on social media, James Gunn was asked 
if he would direct any more Guardians films after Volume 3. God, sorry, tired. Um, the director noted that he planned to do a trilogy from the beginning if the first one worked out. Gunn concluded by saying no plans to do a fourth. The filmmaker also teased a significant character would die in the third Guardians film. Mm. Wow. Mm. Spoiler. Um, Jeez. <laughs> Sony Pictures has confirmed to be adapting the popular manga One Punch Man as a feature film. Screenwriters Scott Rosenberg and Jeff Pinker, the duo known for Jumanji, The Next Level, and Venom, have been tapped to pen the film. Avi Arad and Ari Arad of Arad Productions, God, that's a tongue twister, will produce the film adaptation. There you go. Insert all of your... All, all of the arrives. Yeah. The anime manga film adaptation. Yes. Um, true. Universal. Does that work out? Well, we'll see. I mean, there have been some That's good true. ones. Um, like I, I really. Hey, I liked Death Note. I don't want to <laughs> shout on that movie. I liked it. I, I would mean... say there's when it comes to recently, there's only been two that yeah. I could think of that actually had good live action adaptations, and that's Attack on Titan. Mm-hmm. And uh, Ghost in the Shell. Interesting. Oh, Ghost in the Shell was great. Yeah. I was going to say uh, Ghost in the Shell was really good. Uh, Attack on Titan fans seem to be very sharply divided on. Um, I liked it. I've seen the first one. I haven't seen the second one yet. Um, I have both of them. But um, I I liked it. So, I don't know. Yes, it's a different spin on the story, but... To be fair, they made the movies before the story was done. It's kind of like I'm <laughs> making you young too. Um, it's uh, kind of like when they did the Akira animated movies. It was done or animated movie. It was done before the manga was finished. Well, it's the same with the Attack on Titan live action movie. So they just kind of take their own spin on it. But um, you know, I thought kind of I, I thought it still got the vibe right. Uh, the characters that are in it, I thought they did quite well. Oh yeah, oh yeah, it nailed you know? like the bleakness of it. Yeah, I think it actually more portrays the how just how bleak the situation is in the movies than it does because the anime is too colorful well <laughs> sort of to be fair the anime does still have a pretty muted color palette um yeah, i mean there's that movie it's it's like light blue yeah it's very <laughs> dark like very yeah smoky <laughs> a lot of fog. and foggy yeah um but yeah i liked it. i know a lot of people didn't but i i agree i thought it was uh, i thought it was a good one um, Universal Picture <laughs> Universal Pictures has completed a five-year exclusive deal with the Lego Group that will lead to the development, production, and theatrical distribution of films constructed (good term) from the fusion of original ideas to the colorful build building blocks. Uh, due to the lower-than-expected box office earnings of the Lego movie, the second part. Warner Brothers allowed their contract with Lego to expire, allowing Universal to sweep in and make a deal. Huh. Nice. Hmm. All so right. basically There's just a, a transfer of... Uh, heavy heavy use of companies the Companies paying for the fucking movies. By the way. Yes, quite. <laughs> Com constructed. Fusion. Yeah. Well, I'm glad to hear that, that we're not losing Lego movies. We're just... It's, yeah. They're just changing... There's, there's actually been a ton of Lego stuff, like stuff that I'm sure most of us hadn't even heard of, let alone seen. Like, they've done a bunch more Star Wars ones. Uh, they've done a whole bunch of DC superheroes ones, and there's like a lot of been surprisingly successful. I mean, yeah, they had they had the the two Lego movies, the Batman movie. Yeah. Uh, they had uh, the show uh, Ninjago. Yeah. Uh, which the actually. Movie. The Ninjago movie, too. the Ninjago yeah. film, is also, which mm -hmm. you know, yes, it is very much a kid show. Watch it as a kid show. Yeah. But it's actually pretty good. <clears throat> That's what I've heard. Yeah. Um, and the movie has Jackie Chan in it, I believe, is the one of, yeah. one of the characters. Cool. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're just watching this for that. <laughs> yeah, I, I've seen some of the other like sort of side stuff they've done, like I, uh, Lego, uh, Lego Star Wars: The Padawan Menace, which was freaking hilarious. Um, but they've done a whole bunch of other ones as well, um, uh, like some direct video. They did a couple of mini series, I think, for TV, and but it's since been released on video. And yeah, there's a lot of Lego stuff, and it all has that kind of tongue-in-cheek humor about it too. So they're very loving homages to and parodies of 
the respective franchises that they're adapting. Um, yeah. I mean, so, who would have yeah. thought that Legos would be a, in a form of TV shows and I know and as popular as they are, of all or, things, and as good yeah. as they are. Well, I think really uh, it comes from the strength of the writing more than anything else. Um, I mean, looking at them, I mean, yeah, that you look at the animation, that's Lego characters, but then the real appeal is the humor and the stories and the, the right. writing, which I think is what keeps the people coming back, is because they just, they're very yeah, the, well the written. First, the they're Lego movies funny. are fucking hilarious, especially the Batman one. <laughs> oh, yeah, I still gotta watch that. I've got that one, and I still need to pick up the second one, actually. But, um, yeah, so cool. More, uh, more Lego. And speaking of bricks or rocks, Dwayne The Rock Johnson is set to executive produce a half-hour series in development at HBO about the creation of a backyard wrestling promotion. The series focuses on Cassius Jones, a young dock worker and struggling pro wrestler who uses inherited life insurance money for startup cash and the deed to a shotgun house from his grandfather to start a hip-hop centric backyard wrestling empire in Houston, Texas. Wait a minute. Is this the story of the Juggalos? Uh, I, I don't was, think so. I, I know where you're going, and I don't think so. Insane <laughs> <laughs> no. uh, Clown Posse uh also like a hip hop group. Uh, they uh, had their own back in the late nineties, their own like little uh Back, backyard wrestling uh, backyard wrestling thing, thing going on. Huh. I remember that. Oh, okay. I still remember, to this day I, I think it, it's, it's I remember still trying a thing, to but, yeah. not yeah. pay attention to it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, but I'm sure be. that's kind of what it's referencing a little bit. Could be, yeah. uh, so Sounds really interesting. Streaming giant right. Netflix has landed the rights to the film Enola Holmes, starring Millie Bobby Brown as the title character. There you go. Mm. Alone Holmes? Enola Holmes. Enola Holmes is alone backwards. <sighs> yes. <laughs> yes, it is. So it's Anyways, like, so it's so like, it's home like Sherlock alone, Holmes, but, uh, but it's Alone Holmes. So it's like Sherlock Holmes meets Home Alone, I guess. No, no. I don't. Yeah. H O M E or H O L M E S. H O L M E S, like Sherlock Holmes. Okay, good. Solving yeah. crimes by laying yeah. the cars out on the street. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> the official title to the Andy Serkis directed Venom sequel was revealed this week. Venom: Let There Be Carnage. Will release June twenty fifth, twenty twenty one. Unless oh, the just world has title ended. alone, I'll be saying it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anybody knows and has paid attention to our live streams, my one favorite villain in the entire Spider Man franchise is Carnage. Do you know Carnage. who plays him? By the way? I have not researched it at all, so I don't know. Is it Jackie I'll Earl Haley? The Jackie no, Earl Haley should be Jackie Earl Haley because when I look at the comics, that would be cool, I think but no, it's, Jackie it's, Earl Haley. All right, I'll spoil it. It's Woody Harrelson. Oh, I'm Woody, joking. It's Woody, Woody Harrelson. Harrelson. <laughs> That's interesting. Yes. So, so, so they had to cast a purely psychotic, just limitless evil thing, and they needed a voice for it. Woody Harrelson. <laughs> <laughs> I mean. If you watch the first Venom movie, which is actually pretty good, mm -hmm. which is why I got a sequel, you do see Woody Harrelson as the character at some point in the movie. And he, it kind of works. It kind of works. Right. So I'm interested to well, see what happens. Well, to be fair, <laughs> uh, Venom made almost a billion dollars worldwide. So it was like a much bigger hit than I think anybody was expecting. Yeah. So... Yeah. I still haven't seen it's it. Because you don't like something doesn't mean it's a big, it, it sucks or it's a, well, be a bad hit or I mean, like that. Look at how the Transformers did, financially speaking. Yep, that I mean that seems yeah. to be pretty universally hated. Yet it seems to. Yet everybody them. goes to see them. Apparently, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's a, it's a path of logic I've yet to understand. I have all of them on Blu-ray. So I hate these movies. I have broken I'm down. Go see them. And bought the two disc <laughs> Blu ray edition for a whopping $3. There you go. 
That's the um, only one I'll ever own. I tracked down. I had to track down a couple of them, but uh, yeah, I bought all of them. Anyway, um. <laughs> the FX Network has given the green light to the half-hour animated comedy Little Demon. Thirteen years after being impregnated by the devil, voiced by Danny DeVito, a reluctant mother, Perfect. voiced by Aubrey Plaza, uh, and her antichrist daughter, voiced by Lucy DeVito, attempt to live an ordinary life in Delaware, but are constantly... <laughs> But, oh my god, that sounds amazing. Yeah, but are constantly <laughs> thwarted by monstrous forces, including Satan, who yearns for custody of his daughter's soul. The series will have Rick and Morty co-creator Dan Harmon as executive producer. Oh my oh god. My well, god. Yes. I am totally sold on all of that. Yeah, we just found your replacement for uh, Supernatural. Right? This is the new Supernatural. And I mean and anything. It's going with, to be better than Supernatural. Pretty much anything with Danny DeVito and anything with Aubrey Plaza. Just and I'm there. Do so. it. Yeah. Make yeah. your dreams come true. Yeah. I'm picturing like Louis De Palma, but the devil. Yes. <laughs> like, exactly. just like, hey, I'm the devil. <laughs> there was a show on Adult Swim called Lucy, Daughter of the Devil. Mm -hmm. I remember, yeah. You remember that show? Hmm. That show needs. I wish it had some kind of DVD or Blu-ray release. Because it's literally uh, the devil just trying to like live a normal business life, the daughter just trying to be like a rebellious daughter, and then the then there's Jesus that's in the show, and he's like a wandering DJ. <laughs> <laughs> the show is fucking hilarious. It has to do with uh, like him trying to open, I think, what was it a dildo factory? Okay. <laughs> she has like this plan for like the ultimate dildo, and it's the this ultimate it, dildo. And it's it's twelve <laughs> speed. It came out around the same time as uh, uh, oh, what's that? What was the name? From what was that? Gentle from show that later turned into to uh, turbo uh, explosion. Uh, kill, uh, kill face and, uh, God, that does. I I remember, but I don't remember what the name. Same is. art style as Archer. Um, yeah. It was like the show before Archer. Um, Frisky Dingo. Frisky Dingo, that's what it was. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, it came out around the same time as that. It was like those shows were coming out, like Frisky Dingo, Tim and Eric's Awesome Show. <laughs> well, I needed something that was the diametric opposite of Gentle Flutter, and that was what came to mind. <laughs> Frisky Dingo. <laughs> Turbo Explosion. <laughs> All the right. vibration activated. <laughs> so... Uh, Disney Plus is developing a female-centered Star Wars series. What a bunch of SJW bullshit! Uh, right? That will be written Which and... Sh one fucking series. Not <laughs> yeah. even that will be written nope. and showrun by Leslie Headland, co-creator of Netflix's Emmy-winning dramedy series Russian Doll. While the exact plot is under wraps, the series is understood to be a female-driven action thriller with martial arts elements and set in an alternate timeline from the usual Star Wars universe. Interesting. In renewal news, HBO's Westworld will be getting a fourth season. The Disney Plus series The Mandalorian will see a third season, which is already in development and even before its initial season is released. Or even before its second season is released, I mean. Uh, the live-action Cowboy Bebop series on Netflix has been renewed for a second season. Wow. Oh, okay, before its initial season. I see. Wow. I was going to say, wait, when did I miss? <laughs> yeah. This a live-action Bebop. Yeah. What the fuck? It's, we knew that was coming, but uh, apparently it's, I guess they like what they're seeing and have already renewed it. So, cool. we we'll be getting two seasons of Cowboy Bebop and glorious live-action. Ah, uh, In Memoriam. Another long list this week. Um, let's see, we got Gene Deitch, American illustrator, animator, comics artist, and film director with an over 60-year career from 1945 until 2008, known for working on such legendary IPs as Popeye, Tom and Jerry, and also the director of the animated short Monroe, which won an Academy Award in 1961. Uh, Tom Lester, American actor with a career spanning almost five decades, best known for roles in 1974's Benji, 1995's Gordy, and playing Eb Dawson 
in 150 episodes of the 1960s series Green Acres. I it's used to watch to Green be. Acres a lot. Yeah. Uh, Joe Petticino, American professional wrestling announcer, commentator, promoter, television and radio producer with a career that lasted from 1986 until 1994. Popularly known as the Round Mound of Sound, Pettuccino has been compared to some of the top commentators of the mid to late 1980s and is regarded as one of the most recognizable personalities during the final years of the Territory era. Uh, Billy Caputo, former WWE referee who worked from 1975 until 2003. Caputo then went on to become an, an inspector for the New York State Athletic Commission. Shirley Knight, American theater and film actress whose career lasted from 1955 until 2018, known for roles in 1960's The Dark at the Top of the Stairs, 1962's Bird of Youth, 1997's As Good As It Gets, and many others. Or sorry, 1997's As Good As It Gets. That's one I really need to pick up. Um, that's such a good movie. I like yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, Hector Garrido, American book cover and toy packaging illustrator with a 30-year career from 1965 until 1995. Garrido illustrated covers for the likes of Nancy Drew and Hardy Boys novels, the Destroyer novel series. That's from uh, the same people who put out the Mac Bolan Executioner novels. Uh, as well as painted artwork for the G.I. Joe toy packaging in the 1980s. Ugh. Love the 80s toy packaging. It's just some just amazing artwork on those. Um, Gene Dinarski, uh, or Dinarski, character actor with a 55 year career from 1965 to 2020. Best known for roles in the original Star Trek series and The Next Generation. Izzy Mandelbaum Jr. on Seinfeld. The 60s Batman series, 1977's Close Encounters of the Third Kind, and many others. That's quite a track record. Yeah. Uh, Jerry Bishop, a prominent morning drive radio show, show host in uh, Los Angeles in the 1960s to the 80s. He then transitioned to voiceover work and commercials for Budweiser and Burger King before he landed the, vo the role as the voice of Disney Channel for 15 years. And in 1996... He served as the announcer on Judge Judy right up until his final days. Oh, I was probably hearing his voice earlier today then. Yeah. My dad's a huge fan of Judge Judy. Oh, okay. Movie. Yeah. Uh, Harold Reed, member of the country musical group the Star Statler Brothers and responsible for such hits as Flowers on the Wall, Bed for Roses, Do You Remember These, and many others. And finally, Dmitry Diachenko. American actor, voice actor, and musician who performed from 1997 to 2017. Known for roles in Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, 2012's Chernobyl Diaries, and lending his voice to such games <coughs> as Spider-Man, Shattered Dimensions, The Last of Us, and many others. And what about something in the Crystal Skull? Uh, one of the actors who was in it died this week. Oh. <laughs> he came in in the middle of the obituaries. Oops. <laughs> That's okay. Sorry. Hi, Rosie. Oh. Hi. Hi. Everybody's waving hi. hi. Ow. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. She went to move her arm and her elbow jammed into my arm. Hello, gamer. <laughs> um, Stoud. I don't know why I'm forgetting all of your names. And Uncle Cass. Uncle Hello. Cass. <laughs> so, so uh, yeah, I was playing Destiny with Garbage gamer oh there. yeah, yeah. She's <laughs> like, I hi, garbage gamer. Hi, Salmon. Hello, Uncle Cass. <laughs> 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 of course, you, you gotta have, you gotta act differently around family. Yeah, exactly. That's until, like, right. I blew myself up like a, so many times. Mate requirement. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Cass is just calling you. They're like, hi, Stout man. Hi, garbage gamer. Hello, Uncle Cass. <laughs> 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 Don't worry, Rose. Trust me, we all do it. Yeah, we all like anger to me for talking to family. Yeah. This is like the least like the oh, oh, garbage. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't mean it like it's that. It's almost like the I've seen enough of you. 
<laughs> Hello, Uncle Cass. Is, is that I better? Know. There you go. You all have there energy to your introductions go. now. Energy. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so that is all the news that's fit to geek other than video game news. Garbage. Video game news. Have a few things here. Mr. Um, Gamer. Not, again, not uh, Mr. huge Gamer. amounts of news because of Goodbye, Uncle Cass. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye. Are you going to bed? Um, because of global so pandemics easy. happening. Okay. But there is a few things here. Um, I'm going to, on purpose, just mention <laughs> real quick, not officially in the news, each other at the same time. that uh, no, Animal like Crossing that. has started it's its new event. It's like this weird thing they but do, and I hate it. May yeah. update. The, uh, no, don't. What is it? The uh, Earth Day. Anybody it's pretty much that like to me, I'll punch them in okay. the face. Yeah. yeah. Oh, sorry. It was in <laughs> relation to Earth Day. Yeah. See, yeah, it's like an Earth Day thing. So there's a lot of like Last plant. for like a week. The a power is right. yours. Um, well, I did want to mention real quick, uh, since we were, I mentioned it earlier about Lucy, the daughter of the devil. I wanted to, the person who voices the devil is uh, John Benjamin. As uh, you may know him as the voice of Bob from Bob's Burgers, and also oh, okay. uh, uh, my favorite character he's ever done, which was Coach McGurk in Home Movies. Oh yes. And uh, I was happy to see they started showing that on uh, Adult Swim again. Right? Um, oh, really... he also does. For people who don't watch those shows, if you've ever seen an Arby's commercial, <laughs> he's in the Arby's commercials. I really wish I got that Home Movies <laughs> set that Chef Factory put out. I think it's That's... long out of print now. They're hilarious. Yeah, they're but there's movies. another yeah. release, I think. Arby's commercial. <laughs> it's not as nice, but it's, I think there's another one. Yeah. Um, I mean, it also has uh, uh, Melissa Galeski, John Glasser, Sam Cedar, Eugene Mirren, Todd Berry, Jesse Klein, a bunch of people. Talking uh, a bunch about of no, probably movies? notable voice actors. Or no, Frisky Dingo? Frisky no, for Dingo. Lucy, Daughter of the Devil. Frisky oh, Lucy, Dingo. Daughter of the Devil. A dingo, uh, a Joe but baby. like the big known. Oh, big he's name also Archer, is. apparently. Yeah, he's Archer. Yeah, <laughs> in Archer, um, another show. He's I need to like see. in those shows, like those Adult Swim shows, MTV shows. He's a pretty predominant voice actor. Um, he's like, uh, uh, what's his face? The guy that does uh, Master Shake in Aqua Teen Hunger Force. Okay, yeah. Um, like you'll see him like fucking everywhere. Like he's almost like the person. Like I'm not naming any names because I can't think of their names right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the person who voices Space Ghost from Space Ghost Coast to Coast. Oh, yeah. You'll see him everywhere. Well, that was uh, Gary Owens, wasn't it? Gary, yeah, Gary Owens. Yeah. Thank you. He did a lot uh, of voiceover stuff, a lot of, like, announcing stuff. Yeah, he has an announcer voice. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to mention that real quick because, you know, John Benjamin's such an amazing voice actor. His voice is so predominant, you know, and he, I don't think he actually, like, does a voice. It's just his voice. Yeah. For every character that he does, so you can always <laughs> you can always point him out. But anyway, video game news. Um, so yeah, uh, Animal Crossing: New Horizon had a or has currently going on an Earth Day event. So there's a lot of Earth Day stuff, oh. a lot of plants and leaves planting. And, uh, you know, like um, shrubs. Okay, I'm an uh, idiot. It, it wasn't flowers. Gary Owens as Space Ghost. It was George Lowe. George Lowe. <laughs> Gary Owens, somebody. Gary Owens did Powder Toast Man, though. Ah, yes. Powder, Powder Toast, toast. <laughs> Yes. Man. Somewhere, I will have to dig it out and find it. I do have a hat, a Powder Toast Man hat. Excellent. Nice. Uh, yes. And it has, that, like, him on the back, like, flying backwards. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but, yeah. So the next thing here. Um, Cling tenaciously to my buttocks. <laughs> <laughs> I have to say about the Animal Crossing event though uh -huh. it is significantly less annoying than the fucking I'm Easter event was <laughs> <laughs> oh god I was I was finding so eggs but shit yeah. is over yeah. like yeah, no, no one eggs. no one liked the Easter event <laughs> no this is just you know plant shit and we'll give you some uh, free stuff yeah, there for people go. who knows what it is, there's times five nook miles on a lot of the, yeah, like I said, a lot of the planting stuff. Uh, planting, uh, selling plants. Uh, I'm just glad that I finally got a chance to get some rare flowers. Like, um, I didn't have those flowers. Which reminds yet. me, I needed them. Mr. Stoudman, you have to friend me on 
fucking switch so you can come over. Uh, I haven't done that yet. Yeah. Oh, I've sent you my friend code like fucking a month and a half ago. Like, <laughs> even Rosie friended Garbage Gamer on the PS4 faster than you friended Garbage Gamer. You so-called friend of Garbage Gamer. I, think I thought I'd send you my friend code. I mean, it's, it should be in the archive. Go to the archives. It's in there somewhere, I think. Oh, I thought you were I being think, facetious, I... Duncan. I didn't realize you actually didn't know. <laughs> but yes, it's a Ren and Stimpy thing. Yeah, if I didn't, I can I can get it to you. You just shake okay. the can of powdered toast onto your plate, and yes. it magically forms into a piece of toast. Have some. And yes. then Powdered Toast Man swoops in and farts on it, and then it's delicious. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> This is seriously the my, concept my parents, of Powder Trust Man. Now, yes. now, what's funny is, I had a hat. I had the Powder Trust Man hat when I was little, like when I was like five, six years old, and I knew who Powder Toast Man was. Yeah. My parents were very, very concerned. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, That's not even the most outlandish thing no, I, I can say, in that you know, show when either. To, no. When it comes to the, the log... Wow! Uh, the log and powder toast man. Those You're are the an idiot. Things out of Ren and Stimpy. Yes. All kids love <laughs> Don't log. Don't on the electric fence. Oh god. <laughs> it's log. Yeah, hey, you whiz on the electric it's fence, didn't you? It's log. It's log. It's better than bad. It's good. <laughs> That's right. Anyway, um, so yeah, switching over to video game news. Um, uh-huh. Oh, by the way, <laughs> I. Uh, my menagerie collection. Not everything was able like to stay this. on. Yes. They have, they have, power off features. All, all the mini arcades. And these don't. So Frogger, Cubert, Rampage, and Joust, they're all running. And the one on the one top not there. running. Oh yeah. Then I have my Neo Geo Mini. It's ah, running. It's okay. playing Blazing Star right now. Nice. Cool. And my screen back here is playing the SNES version of Out of This World. Yes. Um, and, it was uh, playing Star Fox, but I, I'm like, ah, it's too generic. I have the original uh, Amiga version of that, of Out of This World. Um, so, yeah. so yeah, that's that. I so like the, the computer running, graphics. Obviously, is uh, Fix-It Felix Jr., which is right here. Oh, yeah, nice. Oh, nice. Uh, so it doesn't stay on for some reason. I like that they um, made an then, actual game of that. They did, and it's <laughs> yeah. actually fun. Yeah. I think you can play <laughs> then, it like through a browser, too. Yeah, you can go. I think you still go to Wreck-It Ralph's website and play the Flash version. Yeah. Um, yeah, the Oregon Trail and Where in the World's Carmen San Diego. Again, they don't stay on. Oh. They have power off features. Very nice. Um, yeah, that's the menagerie over here. I like that. Um, I like those little little arcades. Yeah, these things are fantastic. Yeah. They're just a great little shelf pieces, and you can actually play them. That's what I have. Like cool. an old old one. It's uh, Miss Pac Man, and it was uh, it was basically an LCD one, but it was color, so it, like had color. Oh yeah, characters. they still sell those. By yeah. the way, but um, speaking uh, of Pac-Man, but it, but are you it was about like, to mention something Pac-Man related? Well, garbage gamer. Well, you've probably no. seen them. Uh, they, okay. they had a bunch of them out. I think there was a Pac-Man. There was a Miss Pac-Man. I think there was a Donkey Kong, and uh, there should have been a Frogger one. Also. Frogger, yeah. There was like four yeah. or five of them, but I had the Miss Pac-Man one, and it was like this little cabinet with a little joystick, and a, I guess a start button, and that was basically it. And it was great. I used to play that thing all the freaking time. And of course, it yeah, took, I know which I know which one you're talking of about. It yeah, it was actually batteries, better, but minus the fact that it was like an LCD game, yeah, a simple little it was like, good, like, like, like electronic game. It actually played yeah. like Pac-Man. Well, because something like that, where it's basically <laughs> just the character moving around a maze, something like that is really easy for an LCD game to emulate. So, oh, yeah. uh, it worked very well. And that's you know, why the Frogger one is always very good to play too. Yeah. Frogger would be another good one for that too. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I love the original arcade Frogger. Yeah. So yeah. Like I said this one, um, I, I say unfortunately, but it actually works rather well for these miniature form factors. Mm-hmm. These are the NES versions oh, okay. of these games. They're not the actual arcade version. Those are pretty close, though. Like they, uh, they... This is the actual arcade version stuff, because this is a mini console like all the other minis. That's crazy. Um, like That's just mind-blowing to me that they have like a Neo Geo in that tiny little box there. Oh, yeah, not know, only Neo Geo, that... but it has 40 Neo Geo games in it. Yeah. And you remember you the Neo up, Geo? Like... My... The... the... Like, just the massive bricks that the cartridges were for those things. Like, oh, God, yeah. They were there huge. The they a- had two MBS. cards in them. They had there two was the, cards. The AES actually had smaller cartridges. The MVS, which was the arcade yeah. board, had the dual 
uh, dual board cartridges yeah. that were literally like <laughs> they were big. They were like as big as a console. <laughs> they were yeah. They were about as big. They were about half the size of a of a gray box NES. Yeah. So, so well, relating to the Pac Man thing, the reason I wanted to jump off that is because they're giving away Pac Man Championship Edition. I think it's oh, yeah. actually the second game. Yeah, yeah. DX2 on Steam and yeah, Steam yeah. and PS4 and Xbox. So yeah, free. For free. So you can go get Pac-Man Champions Edition DX2 yeah. for free <laughs> right the uh, fuck now. There's apparently a lot of games for free on uh, PS4 right now uh, because yep. I went into my email this morning and Rosie was sitting over there playing on PS4 and I had all these notifications of thank you for your purchase from the PlayStation <laughs> Network. I'm like, uh, Rose, what's this? And she's like, oh, don't <laughs> worry, they were all free. And like, So I went through them all. It's like, okay. Like, zero dollars. Zero dollars. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's like, what? It's, like, it's the Nathan Drake collection. It's um. Yeah, it's the original uh, trilogy. The original Journey. trilogy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Journey. And Journey. Um, yeah. I think we mentioned this last week. I don't know why. I can't remember. I grabbed um, it already, Major Matoko. I grabbed it as soon as one of you guys told me it was free. Uh probably me last week. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> I, I know. I, I remember mentioning it because I remember saying it was uh, developed by the same people who did Flower. Yeah. And flow, and the the lead developer Kelly Santiago, who was the lead developer of that indie team, mm -hmm. was the uh, pro, one of the production managers on the Ouya back in the day. Oh, okay. Um. Anyway. Cool. So so yeah, Championship Edition uh, DX Two, I think is what it's called, nice. is uh, free on the Steam and PS4. That is a very fun game, Pac Man Championship Edition. Uh, I'm still going to pick up a physical copy because I believe the physical copy comes with. The original Pac-Man, mm -hmm. Galaga, mm -hmm. yeah. and uh, Dig Dug, and Dig Dug. Yeah, that's the one I have. It's got uh, it's got all of them on it. So, oh, it's also free on uh, Xbox. Yay! Apparently. Um, okay. So uh, another uh, a game that's coming to PS4, Xbox One, and Switch is a. Uh, Surprisingly enough, it's an old, oh, it's a modern version of an old build engine, mm -hmm. game made on the old build engine system, Ion Fury. Ah. Uh, it used to be called Ion Maiden until they got almost sued, <laughs> for obvious yeah. reasons. Um, <laughs> changed it to Ion Fury. If you've never played Ion Fury, it is fucking fantastic. Um, it is just, I mean, if you remember Duke Nukem 3D, you remember Doom, you remember Quake. Yeah. It is literally a love what letter. What are those? I don't remember those games. It's a love letter to those <laughs> games from that era. Nice. And it is not only a love letter, it is actually built on the same game engine that Duke Nukem 3D was built on. The build ah, engine. Okay, cool. Um, and so, yeah, it's getting a PS4, Xbox One, and Switch release. So um, they didn't say when, it just says it's coming soon. Um, they Again, another game, we don't know when it's coming out, uh, but they did announce... That there is an action adventure game coming to consoles and PC, based off of the adventures of Tintin. <laughs> nice. And uh, naming off, they named off all the characters that'll be in it. I've never actually read any of the Tintin comics. I've so. read some of them, and I've seen one of the movies, like one of the old uh, old movies. Um, yeah, apparently, there's some professor or scientist that's going to be in it. Yeah. Um, the recent a couple... movie was apparently really good, like the CG one they did. Yeah, I, I mean, yeah. I hear good things about the, the movie. I just, I just like, don't know anything about it. I'd so. just like to say uh, sorry to everyone who was waiting for the Twitter announcement. I had it ready to go, and I forgot to click tweet. I just sent it out. So for those of you just joining us, hello. <laughs> <laughs> We've been going for about an hour, so sorry. My bad. Um, um, but yeah, Tintin is, wow. is good. Wow. Basically, you know, young guy and his dog and his sailor friend and a professor dude going off on globe trotting adventures and you yeah. Know, apparently, there's uh, mysteries Jonathan and crimes Jonathan and stuff. Johnson and Johnson. There's like a detective group or something in it. I don't remember. It's been it's ages since I've seen any of them. Read anything. In the article that I read, it said it was going to have notable characters, and they mentioned off. They like said they mentioned off the sailor. They mentioned off the professor. Yeah. And they mentioned off. The, this detective group and it was like Johnson and Johnson or Jonathan and Jonathan or something yeah. like that. It's it's good stuff. It's good wholesome <laughs> adventures. <Yes. laughs> yeah, right. The Johnson and Johnson. 
Okay, I'm like, yeah. I was the, waiting for something to say something. Of the the mystery of I was like trying to dance around saying it. <laughs> <laughs> Captain Haddock. That's what, that's why because I, I almost read it as Captain Harlock. <laughs> Captain Harlock. Wow. Crossover. Yes, Captain Harlock in the Adventures of Tintin. <laughs> <laughs> be a bit of a juxtaposition there. that'd be interesting um, um but yeah it, I mean, there's no trailer there's no video or pictures or anything it's literally just been announced so it's been announced yeah so but I, I just think it's cool that they're actually thinking about older franchises and older ips to make games out of captain harlock and, is great yeah and I yes i would love a captain original. harlock game that would be cool yeah um like a spaceship, like a bat, like a spaceship battle simulator. There's a few other Captain Harlock things that have come out since I picked up the DVD of the original series that uh, I'd really like to get. Um, there was actually a Blu-ray put out of Arcadia of my youth, which I'd really, really like to get. And um, uh, there was a couple of the other series as well. Oh, and Galaxy uh, Express Nine 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 is getting a lot. Yeah. I think all the movies yeah. are out from Discotech, and they're going to be putting out the series as well. So, it's pretty cool. Uh, next bit of news here. Um, a trailer for just a really 80s style, you know, uh, how will you call that? Uh, the, oh my God, I'm having a total brain fart right blah, now. Blah, 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 uh, synthwave, like a lot of oh, okay. synthwave look to it. Uh, it's called Turbo Overkill. Ah, and the only thing in the trailer is literally a weird first-person view of a guy with a handheld double-barrel shotgun, and he looks down at his leg, and his leg transforms into a chainsaw. Nice. And everything cool. is all neo, oh. neo-noir looking with a lot of synthwave music and lights. And uh, Major Matoko just says that the first volume of the Galaxy Express TV series is already out um, on S- SD on VD, I guess you mean, on Blue TV. Um, cool. I know the Galaxy Express 999 if you have a Funimation streaming no account. B- no BD? I don't know uh, what you're saying. No what, Blu-ray disc? What is Blue TV? I think it's a streaming it's service. Blue, I think it means Blu-ray oh, TV. TV on, on Blu-ray. <laughs> oh, it's on, it's on Blu-ray. Okay, got you. So it's oh, like natively yeah. high def. I see what you're saying. Okay, I was confused. You weren't speaking in complete sentences, so I got confused. <laughs> sure, blame. <laughs> We're working yeah. with targets. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, Turbo Overkill. It looks interesting. Like I said, I don't know what the game is. I don't even know what a type of game it is. Like I said, all they showed is a first-person view with a double-barrel shotgun and a guy's leg turning into a chainsaw. Cool. Like, awesome. So. <laughs> And last but not least, uh, released on uh, April 22nd, there was an up- the final update they announced to Super Mario Maker 2 called the World Maker Update. Ah. World Maker Update added a bunch of shit. Mm-hmm. It added uh, a couple of uh, some pickups from, I think, Mario 3. Mm-hmm. And an actual pick a mushroom from Mario 2 <laughs> that gives you the ability to pick up enemies and throw them, like from Mario 2. And carry them around, and you can pick up chain chomps and have the chain chomps attack enemies. Uh, you can mimic a Goomba. Mm-hmm. Uh, you, there's like a lot of helmets you can wear. One of them's a cannon, one's a bomb, one's a bomb, or you can like fly around. But the big thing about it is the World Maker mode, where you can actually make like a miniature uh, Super Mario games, like entire. You can make a world map and fill it with up to I think it was what like 15 levels or something like that from the community. And you can, like, yeah. pseudo-create your own, like, Super Mario World game that people can play. And it has 15 random levels that they put in with a whole world. You can choose which levels you want to go. And it looks it looks like Super Mario World. And it's like, that's pretty badass. And it just expanded on the, uh, the creative nature of the game. And uh, finally, at least when they did that announcement, I finally saw people from my friends list on the Switch switch off from Animal Crossing to Mario Maker 2. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, finally saw someone playing something else. And, uh, <clears throat> yeah, uh, it's like full-on custom, full Mario games now you can make mm-hmm. in Mario Maker 2. Cool. And, uh, yeah, it looks pretty cool. 
So that was all the uh, gaming news at the Geek this week. Uh, at least I found interesting. Excellent. Well, it wasn't like a, a rumor or... That's okay. Or whatever. That's some good stuff. Yeah. I like ah. things that are good. That was tangible. Now, I should mention that there are a couple more free games I noticed uh, for Twitch Prime users. Okay, um, yep. You click the crown at the top. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know why they randomly, in the middle of the month, decided to add a couple more games, but they did. Yeah. So, hey, a couple more free games. I, yeah, Ooh. I saw a new one the other day. Um, I don't know if have I missed one. There are two. Um, you missed it, but yeah, there were two. I don't know if I missed it. You must have missed it. <laughs> must have. Yep. I don't think I see it on this screen. Oh, well, whatever. I'll check later. I'm pretty sure I got all of them. I only saw one new one. But, uh, yeah. The, all right. The last thing I did Twitch Prime for was I wanted to get the, the Doomicorn thing for Doom Eternal. Oh. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I was and thinking I of grabbing it. that, but I don't remember what my login is for Bethesda. Well, no, what I think is hilarious about it is the fact that it isn't just like a skin you see like on the main menu and on, on your HUD or whatever. It's mm. in the cuts too. Oh, of course, yeah, because they use the game engine for those. They I use guess. the in yeah. all in-game cutscenes. So yeah, so like yeah. all this demonic and serious shit happening and there's the Doom Slayer looking like a unicorn. Yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all pink and white and with a fairy wand and trying to be all verboting and badass. As it should be. <laughs> mm -hmm. it's, it's, yeah, it's glorious. Uh, alrighty. Well, do we have some pickups this week? I have one. You have one. Is that I one? have eight. Eight. Holy moly. I think I have six. One, two, three, four, five. No, I have seven. I have seven. Yep. Cool. <laughs> cool. Oh, How about yeah. you, Cass's cardboard boxes? Do you have any pickups? <laughs> nope. No. Guess not. Okay. <laughs> All right. And greetings, Buster Cherry. Uh, we are well. Skinsip was not feeling well this week, so she's taking the week off. And uh, I love that name, by the way. Hopefully we'll be back with us next week. And uh, there we go. All right, well, let's, uh, let's start with Stout here, since you're there. Why do you look all okay. jaggy, like you're being de-interlaced from VHS? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's Stout in jaggy vision. Oh, look, DEFCON 4. I know. And, uh... How Comes to Frogtown, I love that movie. <laughs> Actually, it's not How Comes to Frogtown, but okay. Oh, why is it? And then that's oh, the it's, it's the, yeah, okay. It's 1990, Bronx the Bronx yeah. Warriors. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. yeah. I forgot. Wait a minute, Warriors. this whole okay. time, for the entire show, you thought it was How I Comes forgot. to Frogtown? <laughs> I forgot. Yeah, I think it's because okay, I was so, thought you were asking if DEFCON 4 was on DVD, and I found the only way you can yeah. get it affordably is in a double feature DVD with Hell Comes to Frogtown. So. Uh huh. Okay. So. Okay. So, anyway. I'll chalk that up to loopiness. Anyway, okay. Loopy! Got some, uh, got some games. I went on eBay, what I do now, since I can't really go to thrift stores. What about Amazon? Nobody really should be going to thrift stores. Yeah. So I just go on eBay because eBay has better prices than Amazon. Fair enough. And uh, look to see just what kind of PS2, PS3 games were on there. And I you know, just check it on YouTube to, like, I look for, like, some gameplay videos or whatever to see if it's something I might like. Mm -hmm. But uh, these games actually were something I'd already decided to get a while back. I just never got around to it. So, uh, they were like 6 to $7 each. I got this guy at 2. Ah. 
Hmm. And then I can yeah. see I know nothing about. I got this guy a three. I'm gonna move it over just a little bit. Sorry that that, that yeah, there we go. Because it, it's go. cropped the screen is cropped slightly, it doesn't give you the full widescreen image there, so and That's very good. <laughs> <laughs> this guy a four. Oh, hey. <laughs> <laughs> this guy, huh? This um, is this guy, huh? The main it. reason I was interested <laughs> in this guy is that, uh, from what I understand, it's a role playing game series not unlike Final Fantasy. Uh, <laughs> okay. So it's like a tactical RPG. And also, it's about vampires. At least one of the games is like, is like about vampires. So it's like a vampire based tactical RPG. Uh huh. Sounds kind of cool. The question okay. is about this guy or that guy? <laughs> yeah, that's right. This guy, <laughs> huh? This, this guy. This guy, huh? <laughs> so um next up I found Speed Kings. Speed Kings which looks didn't look fantastic, but it was like five bucks and I was like, you know what? It I looks like I could have fun with it. generic. Yeah, very generic. But like looking at the gameplay, it looks basically like the first burnout game huh. but with uh motorcycles. So looks hmm. pretty good. Yeah. All right. Pretty fun. Pretty fucking then, fun, man. Arctic Thunder, which fucking is basically fun. a ripoff of Mario Kart. Oh. On the PS2. But on snowmobiles but and rockets. On snowmobiles <laughs> with ridiculous characters. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. I was like, okay, yeah, I'll get that. <laughs> Uh, a Mario Kart clone for five bucks? Sign me up. All right. Very good. And then uh, I got some stuff from Best Buy because they had a sale. So I got the Cinderella Steelbook here. Cinderella, Cinderella. I, for I realized I didn't have this on Blu-ray yet. I was like, oh, really? That's the original. Uh, I have Sleeping Beauty, but I don't have okay. Cinderella. So. That's the animated one, right? Not the live action one? Yeah, it's yeah. the animated one. Uh, the Steelbook was seven ninety nine on sale. So I was like, a Disney movie for under $10, and it's the Steelbook? Okay. <laughs> Holy shit. Major Matoka says there's 13 games in the Disguise series. Wow. 13. Yeah, you'll note I didn't get the first game because I couldn't find that one. But yeah. I believe some of them, including that one, are on PC now. So okay, even if I couldn't find it, I it, it's on PC. You know? <laughs> you probably find it there somewhere. Yeah, when I got three from hell. Oh, I need to get that one. Been wanting to watch this one, so. Yeah. Right, Got that one. I'll probably Hague. watch that with uh, skin slip soon. And yes, R.I.P. Sid Haig. And then finally, hey, fantastic boy. I had that one. I needed something to get over the thirty-five dollar uh -huh. free shipping thing. Okay. And this was five ninety-nine, so I was like, yeah, that's not too bad. <laughs> Yet another movie. In which Donald Pleasant goes completely batshit crazy by the end of it. Fuck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's Excellent. everything I got. Excellent. Very good. Awesome. Some good stuff. So, Garbage Gamer, what did you get? <laughs> we already I... talked about all the video games I... in the background, but... <laughs> Look at all those video games in the background. Cool. Right, so I actually uh, this this tower of power here mm -hmm. is um, hiding something. Oh, it's hiding my pickup. Oh, I have a box for it over here, but I'm Sneaky. going to gonna remove these here. Oh. So tear down actually, the wall, Mr. Gorbachev. Turn yeah. Turn the SNES Mini off. Uh huh. Turn the item on and bring it a little forward here. Okay. 
My friend the boot. What's that? Let's see what it is. I think what could it be? Oh. In the US. What is this? Say hello to the Turbo Graphics Mini. Hey, very nice. Had Turbo to Graphics order it off of uh, Amazon Japan. Oh wow. Uh, but like I said, this is the US version that we're going to be getting. Yeah. They're just it's already for sale in Japan for some reason. Interesting. Um, but nice. yeah, I have been playing around very with it. Cool. It is absolutely awesome. Um, it's got a crazy amount of games on it. Yeah. Because it not only has TurboGrafx-16 games, but it also has PC Engine games. Oh, cool. Um, and you can actually switch between the systems. Um, oh, sweet. Major Photographer says that has the arcade version of Salamander. Yes, it uh, does. Which, of course, we knew over here as Life Force on the NES. Um, Love that game. Plug it in right there. Did a whole playthrough of it on MMC Retro. So actually down here at the very bottom, it says select console. Okay. Boop. And then whoop. Now we have the PC engine. PC engine. <laughs> there we go. Very and this, nice. unfortunately, like I said, they don't do any translations for any of these games, but oh, it has yeah. Dracula X Rondo of Blood. Nice. <laughs> on here. Um, so there's... Uh, Snatcher. Various, has Snatcher. This, and this is the CD version. Nice on it but it's all in japanese uh, <laughs> you, you literally can't play it um i mean you can play it but it's yeah all um it has uh star parodius uh it has ninja gaiden nice um there, there's salamander right there so yeah in order to access the arcade version when you start it you have to start and hold the run button and when you hold the run button you get uh that's still that's still the <laughs> uh, whatever version. Um, I think it's either. Hold on, I'm turning the menu. Need to be. Let me try again. Needs to be asking you for quarters. <laughs> Let me try this one. It's it's something on here. There's a there's a button that you have to do like a button command or hold down a button in order to get access to it. Okay. Um, but it's got Gradius, Utopia. Um, there's a really rare game on here. That's apparently really hard. Oh, it's got Easebook 1 and 2. Uh, Dungeon Explorer. A bunch of fantasy. The original Fantasy Zone. Uh, Galaga 88. Very so cool. So we go back to the Turbo Graphics. Um, we've got Air Zonk. Switches over uh, pretty quick. Yeah, it's got Kadash. Kadash. Uh, Bonk's Revenge. The, the American version of like Easebook 1 and 2. Splatterhouse. TV. The Turbo Graphics 16 version of Splatterhouse, which is on, which is not censored, I believe. Nice. Uh, it's got Ooh. Space Harrier, Psychosis, Ninja Spirits, Utopia, Military Madness, JJ and Jeff, Chu Man, Chu Man Fu, uh, Victory Run, R Type, Power Golf, Moto Raider, Dungeon Explorer, Blazing Lasers, hmm. Alien Crush, Lords of Thunder, Bomberman 93. I mean, it's just like this is a pretty epic list of games. Yes. And the controller is fantastic. It only comes with one, but it is a USB-based controller, and the cable is long as shit. <laughs> <laughs> nice. uh, play it from the other side of the room. Yeah, pretty much. <clears throat> um, so yeah, I had to pay a bit of a uh, bit of an upsell in order to get this. I got paid like 115, but again, it was it was imported, so I had to pay the import cost. So I mean, this thing sells for like 99 dollars anyway. Nice. Not bad. Uh, and there are phys other physical versions of this. Like, if they, I think they all function the same way. But you can get one that looks like the PC Engine, uh, one that looks like the Core, and the other one looks like the Core Graphics. I think is the other one. Hmm. Um, I think the only one they're missing is the Super Graphics, which is the weird, bluish-looking one. Um, so yeah, so this is my big pickup for the week. <laughs> very well yeah that's um uh, that's definitely a notable one um i think you were yeah, talking about that one a while back when it was first well, announced cycle through. Cycle through does it have very many of the cd games or just that one it has i don't know like i, said, I don't know much about the turbo graphics i never had one as a kid didn't know much yeah. about it so there's um, that one that I remember where I was trying to struggle to remember, and now I've forgotten the name of it again, where it was it was one of the, I think it was the pack-in game that came with the TurboGrafx CD, and it was kind of like a side-scrolling shooter 
platformer. I, I will thing. say this: there's a lot of side-scrolling shooters. On this. Yeah. Um, I forget what it is. I was discovering like half, easily half the games on this list are side scrollers. Um, but I know, yeah, Snatcher. Uh, I know Rondo of Blood is a CD game. Mm. Uh, uh, let's see. There was another one here that I noticed. Um, there's, I think there's a CD game that's actually in the Turbo Graphics section. Might be, might be Blazing Lasers. Oh no, it's Eastbooks one and two, the because ah. it has it has the voice acting in it. Oh, and it has okay. a, a orchestral score and all right. that kind of stuff. Um, so, oh, Major Matoko says uh, with Salamander, you hold down select and hit run to ask access the hidden game. So I guess to get the arcade version. Really? Because oh, I was holding down uh, select. And you, you hit the A button, or the 2, or the 1 button. Yeah, Lethal, to, Lethal Enforcer was great, uh, Buster Chair. I remember there was a bit of a controversy at the time because it used digitized actors instead of, like, hand-drawn sprites. And it was a shooting gallery-style game. Pretty cutting edge at the time. So hold down select, and then hit run. Nope. Still no. Well, what the fuck? Maybe you hold down, select, and run. <laughs> hold on. Uh, ah, there it is. Oh, there. And select and run at the same time. Yeah. Now it's booting up. There it is. At least it showed the. It showed the ROM boot. Yeah, it showed the ROM boot. Oh God, that looks so familiar. Yeah, I used to play. I played the shit out of Life Force on the uh, the NES. Oh yeah. No, we I, know. I recognize that. Because you did the video. I did. Yeah. yeah. Here's the here's the controller, the original Turbo Pad. That's nice. With the functioning Turbo buttons that do work. <clears throat> you can flip the. You can switch between different levels of Turbo. Were those the first controllers to have Turbo buttons? No. Not well, natively, shot. probably. And, and natively mm. built into the system. Like, yeah. It yeah. Third party Because I remember, like, SNES had. Uh, well, so did NES. And, uh, yeah. and Genesis for that. Yeah, yeah. But you, you had to buy them. Separate. And I think they were third party. Yeah, they were third party. Yeah. yeah. I think this is the NES Advantage, yeah. The You love the retro gaming episodes? Yeah. Well, there's. Plenty more to come, Major Matoko. I did a lot of them for the video letters. So there's definitely more uh, more coming. And there's there's even more that I haven't digitized yet. Let me get back to doing another batch of episodes. So you'll see. I like more. the one where you were murdering Smurfs. Smurf Hunt, yes. <laughs> that was great. That was like just a little indie thing that somebody did. With the shoot 'em up construction kit, and they decided to make a Smurf game. Yeah, that's definitely it. so. Fantasy holding down Zone. the Smurf button, that's the arcade version of Fantasy Zone. Okay, cool. Welcome to the Fantasy Zone. I always think of Space Harry when I hear the title of this. Oh, game. I always read the bottom as Player. F. Play <laughs> Player. F. Uh -huh. uh, okay, that was fun. Wow, good job. <laughs> But uh, yeah, I'll have to do some more. Yeah, no, that's that's pretty cool. So you got everything that's obvious and lots of hidden stuff too. So yeah, so when you when you load a CD-ROM, it even shows the okay. That if you like hear it, yeah, the disk drive. So it, it actually CD -ROM plays the system. noise. Like you hear it clicking in, and then it actually you hear like a disk spinning. Oh okay. And reading, and all that kind of stuff. So I'll just I'll just leave it on this. As, that's funny. At uh, Snatcher. <clears throat> All righty. Yeah, well, Japanese. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I played uh, basically a ROM version of that. Um, never finished it, but I liked it because, you know, basically cyberpunk sci-fi 
type of thing. Oh yeah, and like if anything, I'll I'll seek out the, uh, the Sega CD version. Okay, so my pickups this week. Um, got a few more items for the RoboCop collection. Um, I didn't have any, but thanks for asking. You never have any. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Do you have any pickups, Cass? <laughs> Well, as a matter of fact, this week, uh huh, I do not. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I have a few, well, I have one little gem I found in uh, going through my storage stuff. Uh huh. Um, now, bear in mind, these are like my childhood computer things. I found a bunch of floppy disks. Oh. And the one right on the top, and bear in mind, this is from when I was a kid, so this is something that every kid should have. Mm hmm. A rental application. <laughs> wow. I think I vaguely remember these. These used to be on those little spinny racks right at the checkouts at like drugstores. Oh, so you just, they were free or whatever? They were free or they were like five bucks or something like that. And yeah, yeah you could get, like, I, I think I actually paid money for that. I can imagine the cashier being like, uh, I'll take your money, but, you know. <laughs> you know, this <laughs> isn't a game, right? It's like a game or candy or something. Yeah. But, I want yeah, to fill out a rental application. <laughs> They'll be on those spinny racks, and you could, yeah, you could get ones for like a, you know, a car purchase agreement or a wow. will or like all these different ones. So I really damaged his brain when I tripped on the stairs that day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, you did. Look, Cass, <laughs> Pac-Man, Frogger. Oh, a driving game. It's like, oh no no, can I get this? Application to rent. That sounds awesome. <laughs> yes, well, all the other children were playing their Pac-Mans on yeah, the Saturday their morning. Their Pac-Mans. Cass was learning how to write a will. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, good night, Rose. Like, no, be prepared. Will Rose is in the four. chat. <laughs> good night, Rose. You're not going to come and out I, and say I leave goodnight. my collection of other floppies in this series to... Uh... <laughs> She's like literally in the room next to me. But she comes on to Twitch to say goodnight. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's like mom phoning me to ask what I wanted on my pizza and we're in the same house. Oh, yeah. And, say, and don't phone me back. I'm expecting some calls. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Just come up and tell me. Don't phone me back. It's like, well, why didn't you come down to ask me? Like mum logic. <laughs> uh, I still I was remembering the time when uh is actually what I found mm -hmm. was I found a mixtape I made off of a CD I think you had. Oh yeah. It was like different like techno songs from like nineteen ninety four or something like that. Oh, okay, cool. As soon as I started playing I remembered that I knew right away what it was. Yeah. And um I think it may have been that disc or something else here. Or no, I think it was Macross Plus you were playing for me oh, okay. at full volume. Yeah. That time when <laughs> Mum came down because she needed to say something. Oh, yeah. And she proceeded to just talk anyway, even though we had music going at full volume. And neither of us heard what she said. We just saw her lips moving. Yeah. But it's like, you know, you need to speak above the level of the thing, or like well, yeah. give us a second to wait. Or I know, like she just. Wa I remember that we. Wa she walked in and just like said something at normal volume, as if there was no music playing, and and we were just and both Cass and I just look and it's like what, and then Mom just like <laughs> sort of smiles and snickers a little bit and then walks away. Yeah. <laughs> so we never found out what she said. <laughs> yeah, she really just walked up and we just saw. Huh. <laughs> yeah, just like, huh. it's like, it's like you thought uh, that would work. I was pro I always assumed it was something about the music being loud or something, but then she just walked away. <laughs> like, okay. I know, mom. Mom's never gotten the concept of voice projection really. I don't. Know. I know she was saying to me uh, something to me once as she was walking away. I'm like, you need to face towards the person for them to hear you. The sound to travel <laughs> to the person. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> from my perspective, I'm just like, huh? hi, Rose. Yes, I know. I am literally in the room right next to you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> like, wow, that's lazy. <laughs> I'm gonna use the entire internet to say goodnight. 
<laughs> yeah, I just, I came in and all I heard was Garbage Gamer talking about how everybody was, like, growing up with video games or something, and oh, then yeah. Cass was growing up writing wills. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's yeah, Cass, that's the part remember. Cass found uh, an old floppy disk, and it was, yeah, it was this. Oh my God. That he got when he was a kid. <laughs> Application to rent from self Color, I actually paid money for this as a kid. And she act he actually <laughs> paid money for it. Oh my God. Like five bucks or something. What is wrong with you? <laughs> that looks like a fun game. Yes, Dad says that looks like a fun game. Application well, to rent. I want to see what it looks like. It's like What's makeshift that? Monopoly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what is Cass eating? Gummies? I have no idea. What are you eating, Cass? Cheetos. Oh, chips. Chips. Oh, chips. Loads of barbecue. Cool. They're actually pretty good. I, 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 I find sometimes these no-name brand ones, they just aren't good, but this yeah. one actually is pretty good. I think I've had the loads of ketchup one before. Night, mm. sweetie. <laughs> Application Hi. to rent is so much better than Super Mario. <laughs> <laughs> No, as like Rosie mentioned, playing Monopoly. It's like, yeah, all the other kids are like actually playing Monopoly. I'm writing up all the rental applications <laughs> for the property. So I, I, I know that that meme night picture snow, of uh, Homer gamer. sitting in Bose, and it's like me and then everyone else. I'm gonna do that next to Iceman here. I'm gonna put you. Really application exactly. to rent and everyone else is playing The Sims. <laughs> really exactly. Yeah. Every, I had to take it off well, you gotta because be, I tossed you gotta be once and just went to be like Mario, Mega Man, like, you know. Right. Yeah, that's what I was, you know, application, of, application to rent. Okay. Everyone else is here. Night, everybody right. that's watching. Alright. Night, Cass. Or Cass. Bros. A rental maker. <laughs> <laughs> so, Cass, yes. you decided in your honor the next time I play uh, that fucking game okay. simulation, <laughs> you, you make uh, game dev tycoon. That's what it is. Yeah, game dev tycoon. Uh huh. Yeah. Oh, God, gonna make, I'm going to make a game rent. called the, yeah, the rent application to rent. Application to rent. <laughs> <laughs> I love when I do these things just as like a one-off. Just I'm just gonna mention it uh -huh. during pickup. It becomes these S and I legendary moments. Yes, I feel like we're birthing a new trash can moment right here as we speak. Yes, uh, definitely. You, you very much are the. Uh... <laughs> From the I can't wait to see the reviews come in for application. <laughs> the, 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 in the uniqueness that is cast file. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all right anything else any other cool games from your youth that you found <laughs> uh, I can stack of games. Hey, oh hey speaking of application to rent <laughs> yeah uh, i just found it interesting that i've got sim tower taking up like no room um i actually have a dos box version of it on my computer yeah is that the ute tower one uh no this is the first one the, I mean, is it the Ute Tower version, which is uh, like that? I have now. No, it's actual Sim Tower. It's exactly the same. Oh, as it is. My oh, okay. Yeah. So. Uh, cool. Yeah, now I've got that. And uh, yeah, sorry, I'm just looking through what the back. Yeah, they're pretty small. Because actually, I found, I found a collection of floppies that were um, like my own personal stuff. Mm -hmm. So that's already gone back to storage. This, I guess, is a collection of. Um, like applications and video game ones. Oh, where in the world is Carmen San Diego? Oh, there you go. Yeah, very nice. Yeah. Are these Mac? Are these all Mac <laughs> yeah. ones? Yeah. It's probably actually this version anyway. Hey. Well, hey, what you have on the little arcade cabinet? Yeah. Look what I look what I actually still have. Oh my God, that's the actual <laughs> oh original God. disc. Holy yeah, shit! Yeah, it is. Deja Vu 2, Lost in Las Vegas. Now, I know that even my Mac LC was too new to run it, so... Yeah. Um, but it's still pretty cool to have. I have, I have, uh, I have the ROM uh, version of the Amiga version of that. Nice. Yeah. I have the Windows remaster of it from 1993. Okay, cool. Um, that I 
actually have. Again, I think it's uh, actually I think it runs natively. It doesn't actually need DOSBox. It just runs. Yeah. Nice. But thing. I have that on my. Yeah. The nice thing with the Amiga one is uh, with, with older games like that, um, the emulator software that I use can emulate different Amigas with different operating systems and different configurations and everything. So it's just if you get one of those problematic games, you just kind of run it, try a bunch of different versions of Amigas and then it mm. uh, until you find the one that works. I found that with some of the older games. I have to fiddle with them. The newer ones, not so much. Um, but this one as well, actually. I vaguely remember this game. The Zone um, of Avoidance yeah, by so, Cass uh, D and Green. <laughs> yeah, Cass D. Almost Cass D. Cassidy, yeah. I think I had that one on my original Mac. I vaguely remember it. It was like a space strategy game. Okay. Yeah, like try to take over certain colonies and that sort of thing. I remember it being a lot of fun. But uh, yes, yeah. the era of floppy. Very nice. Very cool. Yeah. So you've been finding lots yeah. of uh, old stuff going through your thing. Yeah, right? a lot more than I ever expected to. I was surprised I've had all this stuff just How's... sitting in my storage. How's uh, another thing Cass found is a stack of old audio cassettes to go with the MP3 uh, conversion device he got. And the first thing that Cass found was an audio letter that he made for me when he was about eight. Mm. <laughs> and uh, he sent me the MP3 of it. It was all of 17 minutes long, but half of which was doing a pretend traffic report and news show. <laughs> very similar to what you saw in that Multimedia Chronicles retro <laughs> episode the Christmas 1991 but um, in radio, in audio form boy, young cast yeah. sure did want to be a news anchor yeah, yeah I know well, and all, actually yeah, and then in the 1992 Toronto trip uh, the first thing he wanted to do when I got there was a pretend news show yeah. <laughs> so it's like it's always about doing the news all the time. <laughs> well, it was just funny how like I had all these different ideas for skits. Yeah, and all this, and you can actually you can hear that a little bit in uh, in the audio tapes that I've listened to so far. Mm -hmm. um, is that I always I had these ideas for things I wanted to do, and I was always trying to gather and put things together to do it. And that yeah, like one of the things I was talking about on Cram that I found, um, which I vaguely remember doing is I recorded an episode of Perfect Strangers oh, that I was right. watching on TV. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but, I was recording the audio. but what I was doing was I was just recording every time the audience laughed. Yeah. <laughs> what I wanted to do was I wanted to build like a laugh track yeah. soundtrack so that I could do like a talk show and have an audience laughing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the problem is, of course, I had it set like uh, holding on record. Yeah. And then what you would do, you'd pause so it would stop the tape. Mm -hmm. But then as soon as you release pause, it would record. So... Mm -hmm. Because you were forcing the tape to start recording right away again, it would kind of jitter the audio a little bit. Oh, yeah. So the problem is, <laughs> it's like four minutes of studio applause, but then you hear like, vroom, vroom, every time it starts again. <laughs> <laughs> I was imagining it, there'd be like a warping Perfect. to it. So like, That's what it was. Yeah, it was like... <laughs> Yeah, it was like, ah, 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 ah. <laughs> and so you hear that for like two audio minutes. Of people who have Tourette's then. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's, funny, it's funny too because I recorded the theme song of the show, so it's like I guess I would know later what it was. And then you start hearing all like the jittery laughter. Yeah. And then it just goes to the like, da, 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 when the show ended. <laughs> and then it stopped. And the very next thing I was coming in was I was explaining actually to you, Sean, because I guess this was going to be on something I was going to send to you as well. Mm -hmm. I was saying that that's the soundtrack for my talk show. And could you please edit out all the parts where it goes? Zzz? But of course, if you did that, you would have edited out basically the entire recording. Almost, yeah. Double yeah, Seven says it's the audience being electrocuted to make them laugh. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, the later seasons of Perfect Strangers are probably not far off. <laughs> uh, what else have I found so far? So I found, I kind of mentioned there, I found my old answering machine tape. Oh, yes. Um, kind of neat. So for all you kids out there, back in the day before voicemail and all this electronic stuff, you actually had a tape recorder, effectively, that was hooked up to your okay, phone. Hooked up to the phone, yeah. 
and you would put actual some of them use mini uh tapes and that mm. sort of thing but i had one that used actual full-size cassette tapes <laughs> yeah so did i so uh yeah so you would just put a normal tape in there and then uh so i still have that tape from uh, i actually uh, saved from... all of mine too i i gotta digitize them once in a while some of them are like recordings of my friends calling and lamenting that I was still asleep because it was the middle of the afternoon. <laughs> uh, so was mine. I was 12 at the time. Yeah. That what? Uh, so were mine, and I was only 12 at the time. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. But, uh, yes, I found that. Um, I found yet another audio letter. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? And one of the things I was going to include is I mentioned how uh, I'm going to include something I found on the Sean Strano trip tape. And I'm oh, thinking no. to myself, I'm like, you were there. You're going to know what it was. <laughs> and it was, it's one of the retro episodes. It's the, with uh, you and Jason going to the mall. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because cause the thing was, I didn't know that was on there at the time when you oh. made the tape for me. Oh, okay. I knew, like, all our stuff we did was there. Yeah. And then I remember when I found that later it was like this hidden gem of stuff i had never seen before you thought i didn't know about it or something <laughs> yeah I think that's what it was. <laughs> even though like you're there but mm -hmm. uh, kid logic yeah and so i'm mentioning it i'm saying i'm saying so i'm gonna play it for you uh, there's a bit of bad language uh like the f word <laughs> like that. and then i promptly realized that <laughs> yeah i'm just I... <laughs> i'm just recording this for sean so i'm like well so it has fuck in it <laughs> and then just pause, and then you hear me say, "Please don't play this tape around mummy and daddy." <laughs> oh my god, you have to send me that one. Yes, I was, <laughs> I was dying laughing listening to this. <laughs> so, yeah, that uh, needs to be on the sound. Cass board, said, by the way. "Fuck on Please don't tape, play this yeah. around mummy and daddy." Oh my god, yes. <laughs> yeah well i'll send it to you and you can probably clean up the audio clip of yeah. it of course there's also tape hiss and everything um i found a couple of things with uh, my best friend growing up mm -hmm. we did some audio recordings and that sort of thing nice. i found an audio diary i was trying to do and this was actually when i was about 12 oh, okay um i think my intention was to do it more long term and then i yeah. i did exactly one recording <laughs> That's so, about how how my audio diaries worked out. I did a few audio ones, a few video ones, a few written ones. Never kept up um, with any of them. But yeah, it was uh, December the sixth, nineteen ninety six, and uh, I narrated my day in excruciating detail. <laughs> sounds, I mean, here's the scary like thing: you. was actually I come onto the tape and I say, "Okay, so this is a continuation of December sixth. Uh -huh. So I started this somewhere on another tape." And just oh. by continuation, from about 2 p.m. onward in that day was like 10 minutes of audio. <laughs> so oh. somewhere else you <laughs> filled up an entire like 90-minute cassette talking about from when you woke One up day. until 2 p.m. <laughs> <laughs> so side B covers 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. I hope you find the rest of that. You have the um, entire so saga of that one day. <laughs> Any of you people out there who think I go on and on with my stories now, yeah, uh, I condensed it up wow. from where I was. You're an idiot. Uh, but one of the neat things was apparently that was the first. Uh, so what it was was uh, Dad was in town visiting in Toronto. Thank you, Jim. And, um, <laughs> and uh, was it? Yeah. So Dad was visiting, and you were in Toronto still at the time. So you met up with us, and we all went out for dinner. Yeah. And so we went keg and it was the first time you ever had me try the baseball oh right yeah so i actually uh yeah and on the recording is uh um i was like yeah so then our dinner arrives and oh my god it was delicious <laughs> <laughs> this then, was uh, uh yeah the keg is this uh, steakhouse in canada and they, they, one of their specialties is what they call the baseball which is basically uh, just a big chunk of steak and uh, I think medium is the most they can cook it without uh, yeah. spoiling it. So we got it done uh, what's called Chicago style, which is where they sear the outside, and then medium. And uh, mm. it's really good. So you get this nice kind of charred flavor on the outside, and then the inside is all juicy and delicious. And, uh, and yeah. Actually, actually, yeah, I mentioned uh, I mentioned that on the tape, how you recommended Chicago style. Oh, well, there you go, yeah. 
<laughs> uh, and also, that was the infamous incident of Sean trying to order more than the legally allowed limit of alcohol. In oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't realize it was that far ago. I thought that happened more recently. Yeah. But um, it was because when they do their drinks, like they have the normal sort of, you know, almost kind of like this size sort of glass. <laughs> or you could get what was called the keg size glass, which was a bit taller. But Duncan, so, medium is not underdone. That's like perfectly done. Yeah. <laughs> actually almost overdone in my my books i usually get medium yeah. rare usually yeah but uh yeah so i guess what happened was was sean wanted a double shot mm -hmm. but he wanted it in the keg size glass which is the bigger glass of coke <laughs> oh yeah but so, so it would have been like four ounces normally. or something yeah the keg two. size normally is a double shot anyway so yeah. she was like um Sir, that's more alcohol than we're legally allowed to serve. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I want to go for four shots of rum. In it. I'm just that hardcore. The just, funny thing is, <laughs> when I mix four my two. own drinks, it's usually like three or four shots in there. I, like, I, I mix just, them quite strong. Boring, yeah. yeah, about a third of the glass is rum, and the other two thirds is coke. <laughs> uh, and I also found a tape of um, '80s music I recorded off the radio. This was around 2001. Ugh, you um, can, Duncan, you can keep your charcoal. I like to actually have some flavor <laughs> and juiciness left in my steak. The only kind when of I was a kid, I get it done like well done. The only kind and of beef I, I do, the only kind of beef I do well done is uh, hamburger, like anything ground. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, see, but in, like in the real world, meat, it goes rare, definitely. medium rare, medium, no, and you fucked it up. Get out. <laughs> Buster says, I always say for my steaks, run it through a warm room. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. I don't um, even trust the people at the restaurants to get it right anymore, so I just say, make sure there's some pink in there. You know? Yeah. <laughs> like... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> of course, yeah, the one garbage nice, gamer who nice was thinking center. we we ask them politely but firmly to leave. <laughs> politely but firmly. Yes. Oh, pro Latin. <laughs> Stop being so American. <laughs> um, was it? Uh, yeah, but no. So the last tape I found was uh, was an '80s night I recorded off the radio in around 2001. Nice. Um, I was here in Victoria, so that was uh, like our local rock station did a Lost in the '80s Friday night at the time, and this was around the time I was really kind of just getting into '80s stuff. Um, oh, okay. It was kind of yeah. early up in high school, so, and so that was kind of neat. But it was neat. Um, I actually managed to get, uh, unfortunately, whenever commercials came on, I tended to just flip to another station. There was a couple other stations were doing 80s stuff that night. Yeah. But uh, there was a couple times, I guess, I'd left the room or something like that. So I managed to get some of the commercials, and that was actually kind of cool to hear. Oh, yeah. So they're like from that, like, from back know, then, yeah. town, like, town and country center, the you know, across from the Moxies, and I'm like, that's not there anymore. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so that's my endeavor so far. But I've, uh, yeah, I've got quite a few more to go. Wow. So, yeah, keep going with those. You're, you're finding some real gems. <laughs> Yeah, it'll be a project for a while, for sure. Yeah. I'm just glad they still work, actually, because, I mean, I've played some from as far back as 1992, about as old as they go, and well, they sound fine. They should be fine, generally. I mean, as long as they were stored in, you know, recent, recent, decent uh, conditions. Um, they were not. That's why I'm very impressed that they okay. still play. <laughs> well, audio cassettes are pretty durable, usually, as long as... Really, it's only if they weren't replayed a million times. Generally speaking, they'll keep for quite quite a while. Yeah, I don't think a lot of them were. So, um, yeah. yeah, they've mostly just been sitting in storage. Some of them were sitting loose just without um, cases. So, mm -hmm. uh, But I had actually a lot of cases. So they've all got cases now. And, uh, yeah, so now I, uh, uh, well, since I'm going to be unemployed in four days, um, that will be my project going on. Excellent. Well, that'll, that'll keep you busy and uh, and entertain us with all of the various gems that you find that are suitable yes. for public consumption. <laughs> uh, yes, yeah, some of them are, some of them are uh, going to be disappearing. <laughs> uh huh. Mysterious. Oh, sorry. One other little thing I had was I had another visit with Sean in around 1994. 
mm-hmm. when Sean had absolutely no interest in recording on tape or oh. doing anything. <clears throat> oh, really? Wow. I just sort of, I was like, you know, I said the date and everything like that. And then you just hear Sean quietly in the back. I was like, oh, we have to go soon, Cass, oh. or something like that. And then you started, I think, just looking at some stuff on my shelf and reading some stuff. So I'm like describing everything. I'm like, so Sean is now reading this. Oh, right. Sean yeah. is now reading oh, this. Oh, yeah. I'm like, really, dude? You need to like, send try, me that. <laughs> trying to get him going. And finally, I'm like, um, I, I think I said something like, you know, maybe I'll just stop this and maybe we'll just talk. Yeah, okay. That sounds like an idea. Click. <laughs> <laughs> and then that was the end of the tape wow i wonder why because I, I notice i don't have a lot of tapes from that era yeah <laughs> like i don't know on it was, my end but um it was a sunday so i mean it might have been like you came over for dinner and then you had to go because we had to get you to the subway or something or it's like 90 or, 94 to about 97 i think i didn't really have a lot of tapes i mean there's a few things but not as much. Well, I think also because that was when there was a lot of changes going on in my life, so I just didn't really record as much or didn't have tapes to record on. I don't know, but yeah. <laughs> yes, I just remember when you were looking through your old archives on the one hard drive, and mm-hmm. the only audio recording for 1996 was a file called Me Burping. <laughs> <laughs> So it's like, that's all you did that year. I <laughs> just belched all year. <laughs> the belch that lasted all year long. <laughs> just like how it's like... It's the gift that keeps on giving the whole year. <laughs> <laughs> it <is> um, <laughs> I, just, I, I just like the idea of this is the progression of Sean's life. is 1995. 1996. <laughs> 1997. <laughs> <laughs> that about sums it up. <laughs> oh, so exciting! <laughs> That's a classic thing. Birth of '94. <laughs> oh god! Uh, truly, your memoirs will be something to behold. <laughs> do a thing it's like you know 1996 it's like you know clinton elected for a second term the olympics held in atlanta like all these different things like, i had a lot of and, john, and john burped <laughs> <laughs> all right so anyway um, pick your pickups. so yeah so as uh i started to say before um hold on put the no that one. <laughs> sure. I forgot to pay my rent. She so had a name, Farts of 93. <laughs> there we go. The follow up to the head album, Me Burping, Me Farting. <laughs> yes. Like slowly revealing cast or something. <laughs> there. Oh. Yeah. Just, to, uh, just to fill it in a little bit. Okay. Right. So, anyway, got some more additions to the Robocop collection. Uh, got the finally arrived the uh, Scream Factory Collector's Edition of Robocop 3. This one did have the slip cover because nobody cares about Robocop 3, so they had them all still in stock. And there's the original uh, theatrical poster there. And a nice selection of extras on there as well. So that's it. Finally got the Robocop trilogy, all the best available editions. And got another one of the Robocop Prime Directives volumes. This is Crash and Burn. And also got uh, Dark Justice. which is another. So there's just one more that I need for Prime Directives, and I'll have all four parts. I hate how they don't number them. I don't know what order they go in, but there's guides online. I'll find something there. Um, Let's see here. Got another uh, Scream Factory Collector's Edition. This one is April Fool's Day, which is, uh, you know, a cheesy horror movie from the 80s. Uh, I remember seeing this back in the day, and I really liked it, so I wanted to get it. 
And uh, I actually have the remake as well. I got it free in the horror pack a while ago. There's the original cover. Um, but I didn't watch the remake because I wanted to see the, the original again for, you know, first. But uh, never got around to getting it. I don't know if it was available on Blu-ray before. Anyway, nice collector's edition. Looking forward to finally checking that out again. Probably going to double bill it with the, um, uh, with the remake. And then, of course, wanting to uh, stay up to date on these, I picked up the Sylvester McCoy uh, Doctor Who set. This is actually the final season of the classic series, season 26. Uh, really nice edition uh, for three of the four stories. It has extended cuts as well as the original broadcast version. Um, two of the stories actually have two different extended cuts in addition to the broadcast versions. So there's quite a few different... Uh, you know, different takes on the different stories you can enjoy there. Uh, very cool stuff. And just to give you some idea of the volume of extras on these Blu-ray sets, I watched the extended cut, extended work print cut of Ghost Light, which is the second story of the season, and it's one of my favorites. And in the extras, they have no less than three hours of uncut studio footage from the filming of the story. Uh, that's just for one story. So I'm pretty sure they have piles of studio footage for most, if not all, of the other stories on this set as well. Um, really cool. I love stuff like that. Really, you know, kind of you just sit there and watch them making the show. I don't know what Stout is doing. Anyway, um, <laughs> really good set. Lots of cool stuff on there. Sure to please any Who fan. And then, of course, as you know, I got the complete series recently, so I wanted to get the uh, two live shows that they put out as well, because they're not included in the complete series set. So I got the first, uh, well, I guess this is the second one, actually, uh, Kids in the Hall, Tour of Duty, which is a, a live tour that they did, uh, featuring some of their best sketches and some new stuff. And uh, this is a cool DVD. It's got, you know, got some nice extras and even a insert booklet there. So, yeah. And then finally, this one was a gift. Um, kind of strange. This was listed as new in the original Amazon listing. But uh, oh. it's the Criterion edition of The Breakfast Club. But what's wrong with this picture here? Does that, uh, does that look right to you? Um, looks a little water damaged. Looks no, a little not... new case. Yeah. Oh yeah, it looks printed. It's uh, it, it, it. I mean, it has everything. It has the booklet, has the disc, but this is clearly not the original case, and it was pretty obvious that it was re shrink wrapped in this case. And if you look, like wow. you can see, like it doesn't. It's the seller like, might not have even realized. It goes that. above the 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 thing. Uh, Criterion does their own cases. They have like a special yeah. kind of case. They're like DVD cases where they don't have the Blu-ray bar at the top. Um, and it almost looks like this, uh, the insert may have been trimmed to fit a little bit as well. Oh my god. So, like one of the things about Criterion titles is they are collector's items. They are collectible so yeah. you don't go messing with the packaging because that's part of the collectability of them, you see. But um, if that was the seller who did that, yeah, it was probably they bought it. They got it, thinking it shrink wrapped. It's new, and they sold it as new. Yeah, exactly. But... It's just annoying that uh, that kind of thing even happens. So yeah. yeah. Anyway, cool to have the Criterion edition of uh, Breakfast Club, even if it's in the wrong kind of case. I might actually just poke around online and see if I can find the right uh, shape and configuration of case to drop it into, and then it should be fine. But uh, I've never seen that happen before with Criterion before, like ever. Me either. So, there are only a few criterions that c come in a blue case, like yeah. Curious Case of Benjamin Button. I have that like one. That. But that's different. I mean, it has yeah. the correct format of insert to fit a case like that. Yeah, um, yeah it's, it's weird. Wow, that's Duncan, fun. what's the matter with you? You like to incinerate your steak, and you didn't like the Breakfast Club. What the fuck, dude? 
<laughs> Who are you? <clears throat> wow. So, if you're wondering about this, this is... Do you know Baby Bell cheese? Yes. Love Baby yep. Bells. This is the wax. Oh, the, the wax. Uh, yes. I love to yeah. play with that, too. It's very satisfying. <laughs> it's all soft and squishy and... Yeah. Molded. So, did anybody watch any movies this week? Watch Napoleon uh, Dynamite. Oh. You watch Napoleon Dynamite? Well, here, let's... Since you spoke up first. Garbage Gamer, Napoleon Dynamite, go! <laughs> yeah. It was, it, was, it was good. It's good. I'm completely covered by the pictures. <laughs> good movie. Oh, yeah, you are. Hold on. I mean, there's really not much to talk about it. I mean, it's Napoleon Dynamite. Uh, that's... Yeah. What did I just put? If you haven't seen Napoleon Dynamite, there. Who the fuck are you? What's the matter where with you? you? Where did you come from? That what planet are you? Who's your daddy? Where did you go? <laughs> where did you come from, Cotton Eye Joe? Yeah. <laughs> That's what I want to know. Well, yes. Classic mm. early 2000s MTV film, Napoleon Dynamite. Um, I can't even remember the actor's name. Uh, guy who played Napoleon. Oh, John Hedder. John Hedder. Yeah, John Hedder, yeah. Heater, um, Hedder, Hedder, Heater. Yeah, that was the one when Sean found out I hadn't seen it. He was like, but it, it's your life. <laughs> <laughs> Discovered uh, I had a uh, co-worker. I was happy to be the one to show it to you, though, finally. Who, yes. Well, yeah. One, uh, <laughs> I knew you'd love it. at my place of employment, yep. um, I have a co-worker who looks exactly like Napoleon. Oh, God. And he's even really, really tall with oh. like, with like curly, curly red hair. <laughs> and uh, and also I have another coworker who has seen. She said she loves the movie. She's seen it a bunch of times. She had no idea there was a post credit scene. Really? Actually, yeah. uh, the post credit scene was added later. It was not in the theatrical version and not in the original DVD release. It was added later for one of the anniversary um, releases. I have to correct you on that. What? The DVD release did have the post credit scene because that's where I first saw it. <laughs> okay, well, it was, I guess it was added for the DVD release then. Because I was going to say it might have just been added for the home release. Yeah, because uh, it was not, it was not in the that. theatrical version. Because I, I had the DVD for years. The only two versions I've ever owned was the DVD, the original DVD release, yeah. and the 10th anniversary edition, which yeah. is the one that I have now. I think that's the same with me, actually. The the 10th anniversary Blu-ray, is that the one in the, like, the fuzzy case? Yeah. Yep, that's the one I've got. <laughs> yeah, it has all, a bunch of Napoleon's artwork in it. But, uh, but uh, yeah. yeah, I just watched that recently with Rose, and uh, she loved it. She just loved it immediately. I mean, I, I still stand on the fact that this movie is relatable to everyone. Yeah. If you find someone that says that they didn't like the movie because it wasn't relatable in any way, they are flat out fucking lying. <laughs> because this literally yeah. is a stereotype of everybody ever. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> And it's, it's like you've either known someone like that you went to high school with or middle school with. You work with somebody like that. You you, and, it's, and it doesn't have to be Napoleon. It's just some character in that movie, whether it's... You know, endlessly <laughs> quotable, too. Endle yes, yeah, endlessly oh, yeah. quotable. Your mom goes to college. I've, I've had, <laughs> had t-shirts and sweatshirts. You know, I for the longest time, I had a gray sweatshirt that had <laughs> Dina the Llama on the front. And it's it's dinner! Like, no, I said, Tina, you fat cow, come get some dinner. <laughs> Pedro <laughs> oh, offers I, you his I protection. I proudly wore that shit. <laughs> or out, out in public, to nice events. <laughs> it's on the front. Very bloody. Tina, Tina, you fat lard, come get some dinner. <laughs> you fat lard. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, the I other one I had. Pedro's... On the front, it just said small text, bow to your sensei, and on the back, it really big, bold, bow to your sensei. <laughs> I love how Pedro's <laughs> scary cousins are helping to stick up for the nerds. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah and they, they're used as a, uh, you know, don't fuck with me kind of thing. Like, they pull up yep. <laughs> in front of the school. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Stand their arms crossed, just looking sternly, shaking their heads. <laughs> no. <laughs> don't even think about like it. Like I said, the one scene that I just, every time I see it, I just crack out laughing. It gets me every single time. 
and it's the it's the just the dashboard scene a scene of Rico driving the van and just the tangerine just goes boom. He goes, what the fuck? <laughs> well, I like... that, that, that little fight scene that they have where they're trying to kick each other. Yes. And they hobble over the fence. I love when <laughs> when Kip is trying to uh, demonstrate the durability of the Tupperware by putting it under the wheel of the truck. <laughs> and just like, pow! Oh, Damn it! <laughs> Damn it, it's dried it off. <laughs> I think the scene at the beginning with the farmer going and uh, shooting the animal right in front of the oh, school oh, yeah. bus full of children. <laughs> <laughs> Um, oh, forgot place. my checkbook. Hope you don't mind if I um, pay you in change. <laughs> oh, God. Dollar yeah. an hour. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Talk about infinitely so, quotable. Yeah. So, so uh, a bit of uh, info about it. The movie is set where it is filmed, which is filmed in Idaho. Mm-hmm. Yep. So, Preston, Idaho. Yep. Um, so, yeah, a lot of people, because that was a question for a long time, was, like, when... We still don't know exactly when this is supposed to take place. Yeah. Um, but we do know where, and it was in an actual location, and it's mm-hmm. where they filmed it, and it's it's in Idaho, and yeah. <laughs> but I think the when has actually been answered because you briefly see his student ID, and it shows the current school year. Ah. Does it? It's like oh four oh five or whatever it was when it, it was filmed. It feels like it's the eighties, but it isn't. I, I, think, I think that's the joke because Uncle that, like, Rico wants to go back to the eighties. Yeah. This, this whole family is just like stuck in the 80s for no yes. reason. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> yeah, because I mean, like, obviously they have internet because he's talking with oh, the yeah, yeah. online. Talking Don't be with jealous. Hot, I'm talking to hot, with hot girls babe. all day. And we also have been talking with hot babes online. La Fonda. All day. Yeah. <laughs> UH. La Fonda. <laughs> <laughs> Why does, I loved the idea of like you know when he's waiting to meet her like that's how you wrote it out on the sign and you think it's wrong yeah. but then no. that's actually the spelling of her name <laughs> well, I was going to say like at first you think Haha, he misspelled her name because he heard it wrong wait a minute he's been chatting online in text form all this time he would yeah. presumably know how her name is spelled <laughs> yeah <laughs> But yeah, no, I think that's sort of the thing is like, yeah, they're just, they're all so like lost in some decade. Yeah. I mean, there's even elements of 70s, I would say. In I would some say the, yeah. the living room yeah. furniture is definitely 70s. Yes. The wood yeah. paneling, well, the yellow carpet. is very 70s. Uh, and like yeah. early, early yeah, but, 80s. And there's yeah. like a 90s telephone with the cord that goes so long that he can walk all the way outside with it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Which we've all, again, if you grew up in the 90s, every house had that every house had the phone with like the the five mile long cord uh, cord on it <laughs> hanging on the wall in the kitchen you know it's just yeah like i said there's there's some you can relate to it in some way shape and form that's what's so brilliant about that movie yep um yeah i remember that actually happened with dad once when he was talking to me i think i don't know if he was home or if he was at the office but we're i was i was like seven or eight and all of a sudden, I'm just talking to him, and I just heard this weird sound, like, ding, 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 and then something. And <laughs> what had happened was he got to the end of the cord, and he didn't realize, and then he let go of the phone, and the phone slingshotted across the room. <laughs> 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 of course, he came on back. He's like, sorry, Cass. And he told me what happened. Of course, I just thought it was the funniest thing. <laughs> It's like when I'm just you... picturing him like, like, oh, that's great. So it just let's go, <laughs> <laughs> like in a cartoon, or, yeah. like, or like when the co- retractable cord from the vacuum cleaner. Like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, yeah. like that one moment I removing, I discovered the whole thing about with uh, measuring tape. Oh God, yeah. when you put the little thing and it goes. Zzz. Yep, <laughs> every kid is so... fascinated by that. So, so get, like, I was whiplashed by it. <laughs> yeah. So I was doing it longer and longer. And so I would, I had actually set it up that I made a square like around the room because uh-huh. I retracted like all hundred feet of the measuring tape. <laughs> and I was just getting ready to set it loose. And then mom came down the stairs. Oh, I was God. like, what are you doing? Because <laughs> <laughs> I was in the living room yeah. and it was where all her paintings were that she hadn't put up yet oh god 
She just I think like they were still bubble wrapping around wildly, ripping all the paintings. <laughs> <apart>. <laughs> Wild yeah, snake of measuring tape. <laughs> 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 yeah. Hi. Oh my god. Oh my god. <sighs> All right. Uh, so, movies. so, movies. <laughs> uh, Stow, did you watch anything this week? Well, as I said in the pre-show, I watched uh, Unforgiven with Skin Slip. Oh, yeah. Hmm. Yeah. I still haven't seen Which that. Which I... Really? Yeah. To this day, I still say it's one of the best uh, revisionist westerns of all time. I've it heard that. basically takes all the mythos of the West and flips it on its head. Excellent. Intentionally. Yeah. And, yeah. It's good shit. It's a good fucking movie. It's a good fucking movie. Well, I watched it. Uh, I watched the 4K version, mm-hmm. and actually, I looked into this because I because we, I just watched it right. And I was yeah. like, Well, this doesn't look quite as good in 4K as I was expecting. Huh. That's intentional, though. Mm-hmm. I looked it up, and like Clint Eastwood, like. Uh, basically said when it was being made when when the 4k uh transfer was being done he made sure actually that it stayed true to the way that it was shot mm-hmm. so like the really dark scenes and there are a lot of dark scenes in the movie uh feel muddy because that's the way it was shot uh-huh. so it's just like, yes, it's not going to be the perfect fucking transfer at all times, mm-hmm. but that's intentional because that's the way it was shot. Uh, I will say the vistas, the, you know, the wide open shots and everything during the day all look fucking phenomenal. Oh, yeah. But uh, as as a revisionist western, there really aren't as many of those shots as there are in other westerns. Yeah. So, you know, would I say you need to have it in 4K? No. If you found the 4K and you have a 4K player and you're interested, and you found the 4K disc for like ten bucks, maybe. <laughs> but otherwise, you're good with the. Uh, the newer Blu-ray, which has the same uh, new remaster. Oh, okay. Uh, so. All right. Very good. Cass, did you watch any movies this week? I did. I watched a, a really great 90s movie. Mm-hmm. It's called Application to Written. No, I'm just kidding. Uh. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Entertaining and uh. educational. <laughs> um... <laughs> No, I actually watch is a rewatch for me, um, but I watched uh, Bad Boys Two. Oh, okay. You know, watched the first one last week. Uh, I saw it in theaters when it came out, but of course that was seventeen years ago. So, um, yeah, no, I liked it. I mean, it was typical. Actually, it's a lot gorier than the first one. I can now make the comparison. Yes. Um, and that, but uh, you know, like you know, in terms of the action and that, but uh. Um, I don't know. I mean, it's kind of typical what it is. I know it wasn't as well loved as the first one, mm-hmm. but uh, I now want to see Bad Boys for Life, which is oh, the yeah. uh, one that just came out this year, which apparently is very highly rated. So I yeah. hmm. um, feel like I should be good. Well, so that was actually the only one I really got around to this week because, of course, uh, my off time, I was doing more of the going through the tapes. So, yeah, of course. Um, you could watch a movie and listen to that at the same time. So. But uh, eventually I will get back to my giant list of movies to watch. Yes. And we'll do your 40 for 40. <laughs> Which it's probably going to be at this point. 45 yeah. for 45? 45. 45 40. Okay, guys. 50 for 50. <laughs> dead for dead. The movie. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Morbid. All right. I didn't expect that much mileage out of that, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, what did I watch this week? I, I finished watching season two of Hell's Kitchen. It was great. 
Ooh. I already knew who won, though, because that's the season I've seen before. I just wanted to watch it again because I'm watching them all from season one onward. But uh, gotcha. but it was interesting actually watching that. I hadn't seen it like basically since it was new, so it's been like 15 years or so. And uh, it was interesting watching knowing who won uh, and seeing how that person was throughout the series and like watching i was like yeah i can i can see why that person won because they really had their shit together like right from the moment go way more so than any of the other competitors so it was fun and of course gordon ramsay's always a delight just cussing a blue streak and not suffering idiots gladly and uh um, you're gonna be like it was the person who was setting all the dishes on fire in the first episode <laughs> 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 yeah, Obviously, right. They were Never would have seen that coming. But uh but no, that was good. And then I, I think this was after S and I last week. Uh Rosie and I watched They Live, um, which she had never seen. So it's yet another John Carpenter movie. Um she's fast becoming a John Carpenter fan. She's seen uh, a good chunk of his films now. Um what has she seen? She's seen Escape from New York, The Thing, uh, the original Halloween, Halloween 2, um, They Live, and Big Trouble in Little China. So, I've seen a good chunk of them. Most of my favorites. But, uh, but yeah, she really enjoyed it. She said uh, her mom had watched a bit of it recently and said it was really weird. Uh, but she hadn't seen it, so I was like, oh, okay, well, good, we'll watch it and we'll check it out. So I explained to her a little bit about who Roddy Piper was, and, um, you know, she recognized Keith David, who is also in it, of course, from uh, The Thing. Um, she was quite excited by that. She likes likes him. And, um, and, yeah, she really enjoyed it. She liked the whole idea of the uh, sort of hidden alien invasion and stuff like that she thought some of the dialogue was really funny like the the famous i've come here to chew bubble gum and kick ass and i'm all out of bubble gum <laughs> she liked that one and then uh she liked the final scene of the movie where the thing that happens happens spoiler now she... i know something happens at the end of the movie <laughs> She burst out laughing and she said, that was like the best way to end this movie. <laughs> I said, right? <laughs> she thought it was hilarious. But uh, yeah, she really enjoyed it a lot. Um, I don't think it grabbed her quite as much as some of Carpenter's other ones, but uh, it is kind of a weird one. But uh, but I like it. and She, she definitely enjoyed it. But um, yeah, it's good stuff. They live. Oh, and I showed her the Scream Factory uh, release as well, which has a sticker on it, just a plain white sticker with black lettering that says, Buy, B-U-Y. <laughs> and I said to her, normally I, I take the stickers off, but this particular one I had to leave on for obvious reasons. She was like, oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> but, uh, consume, obey. Consume, obey. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Bay. Stay asleep. That was another one. Yeah. Got one that Quite can see. Quite the film. Yes. Well, it's all about the rich um, thriving at the expense of the poor. <laughs> but the rich are, you know. They run, live as a documentary. They're run by aliens. They live, we die. That's basically what the full sort of title is, kind of. But uh, but yeah, that's that's basically what it is. Very much about the rich living he's at the expense of the poor. He's cast doing squat thrusts in the back. I know. <laughs> I was trying to get something out from under my bed. Oh, that was that I was in. I was rich. Uh, it wasn't my <laughs> 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 
And one, two, three, four, one, two. Eggs and steak and steak the geese. and eggs. Yes, the geese that just <laughs> wander like around his room breakfast. randomly. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> Cass found oh. another floppy disk under the bed, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, it's a combination of things under my bed and my T-Rex arms not being able to reach under there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I can't get the floppy disk out <laughs> from under the bed. Eh, eh, eh. <laughs> I saw the thing. Right? You saw the thing. Be careful. <laughs> no. <laughs> What's so hard to understand about that? I used to say that to Mindy all the time. Drove her crazy. I'm like, well, maybe if you just understood things better, I wouldn't say it all the time. <laughs> Why do you keep saying that? You don't understand. Oh boy. So, uh, yeah. So I guess that's it. Yes, Crowlat, and I am thick kicking. Thick kicking. Thick kicking. It's because of the thick kicking that I have T Rex arms that I can't reach shit. Oh, thick. <laughs> he isn't thick, he's swole. Swole. Big right. swole. Big swole. Jiggly. It's jiggly. It is jiggly, yes. Jiggly. It is a different show without skin slip. Still good, of course. Hope she's okay. Yes. As do we. Mm -hmm. I'm sure she'll be fine. It's a good show. But uh, definitely did miss having skin slip. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Of course. That's well, it just okay. it feels like the right dynamic when we've got all five of us. Yes. Yeah. Like the, the OG crew. The OG crew. The SNI Mrs. Skin Slip Edition. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Sometimes, I mean, sometimes there's weeks when I don't feel up to doing it for whatever reason, you know? Yep. It happens. We're only human. You know? Yes. So. Oh, no. You just feel under the weather. One week out of what? Hundreds. Like, <laughs> like literally <laughs> hundreds. <laughs> <laughs> Usually it's me. If anybody bails on the show, it's me. And then there's just no show. So, hey. You know. Let's edit that giga marathon now, Siskelad. So no, let's uh, let's not. No. Yeah. Marathon, hey, Flaximos. Yeah. Uh, yes, you're talking about astronomical. I actually went three times. <laughs> so I saw three of the what five shows, I think. So yeah, it was fun. It's not honestly not really my kind of music, but uh, the event itself was really spectacular. It was a lot of fun. Really, really enjoyed it a lot. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the I mean, music was not good. <coughs> the, uh, the actual event itself was kind of cool. Yeah. Buster Perry says Astronomical was lame. I did it. Been there, done that. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> not my kind of music either. Yeah. But, I mean, I, I judge an event based on, is it fun? Is it spectacular? Is it different? And it was, you know, even though I'm not big on the music, it was, you know, it was still cool. It was very creative, I thought. And I like events like that that just kind of turn everything <coughs> on its head, you know. Send you flying around. I guess more because it wasn't my music. Yeah. But like I said, wasn't my music either, but I I can't deny that the visuals and the effects and everything were pretty spectacular. So 
Yeah. 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 I hope that uh, I hope that we get more. Uh, you know, kind of live interactive events like that. I also like the fact that for this event, they they repeated it a few times for people who'd missed it or who couldn't attend the initial one. I thought that was pretty cool that they did that. That's a new thing? It is. Normally events are one-off. You miss it, you miss it. Too bad. Sucks to be you. But, um, Haha, <laughs> sucks to be you. Yeah. Is it hard to cut your own hair? No. I've been doing it for about 30 years. I use uh, electric trimmers so I can control the length of the cut. And uh, there, it's really just a matter of making sure you don't miss a spot. <laughs> well, that is true, Colatin. It was basically just... Uh, yeah, that is true. Most events, as you say, change the map or the gameplay in some way. So, because it was just a thing that, you know, resets, essentially, at the end, um, they could have repeats more easily. Currently obsessed with Joe Exotic. I haven't watched Tiger King yet. It's uh, I'll definitely check it out at some point. Um, of course, everybody and their dog seems to have seen it. But, uh, yeah. Just have a number four all over. And then just let my hair grow until it gets annoying. And have another number four all over. Yeah. You're talking about the, the length. I, um, I did mine at number five. So it's a nice kind of middle ground. I wanted, you know, a little bit of presence for the hair, but not super long. And that seemed to be the good middle ground. I still don't know what the whole Tiger thing, King is. Thing is about boy it's a documentary about this guy and his very strange unique life and it's on netflix it's that's a really documentary a, about this guy who is the king of tigers it's really all you need to know is it's a documentary about a guy's life who was very a very strange unique individual um and it's about his life and the people that he's known and things like that and it's just a it's a mini series on netflix like it's a documentary miniseries on Netflix, so it's all interviews with the actual people and whatnot. But um, yeah, yeah, I was going to check out with Guardians Steelbook 4K, my card on Best Buy, and it's sold out now. Guardians, which Guardians? Guardians of the Galaxy or something? I just added it not that long. Yeah, stuff like that. You can't wait. You got to get it right away. I, uh, a nice head of lettuce. Yeah, I, I let the, I let it grow out that year because of some comment some woman made in the smoke pit at work. It really pissed me off where I was, she was talking about dyeing her hair and how, you know, it's like, yeah, I dyed my hair again this weekend. Uh, uh, liquid youth. ha, ha, ha. And I said, oh, yeah, that's I got to dye my hair again soon, too. It's like, huh, what hair? It's like, huh, Island of Hope. I'm like, excuse me? <laughs> so that really pissed me off. To me, saying, saying to a guy, hey, you're going bald, is like the equivalent of saying to a woman, hey, you're fat. Like, it's just not something you say. Like, if it's somebody that you know intimately well, and it's a little bit of light ribbing between friends, like, you know, me and Skin Slip and Garbage and Cass, we all poke fun at each other all the time because we've known each other forever, and we have earned that uh, rapport. Though this is somebody yeah. that I just had smokes with occasionally. I didn't even really like particularly. I just found her annoying and didn't really interact with her much, and, like, she feels like she can say something like that to me? No. So, I stopped cutting my hair for a very long time and got that big, shaggy Michael Landon mane. It's like, yeah, island of motherfucking hope? Huh? <laughs> yeah. Island of awesome, more like. Awesome, big, shaggy mane of hair. 
So that's where I, that's why I did that was out of pure petty annoyance at the comment this woman said and to prove that I had more than just an island of hope. <laughs> that's very true, you know, Plaximus. Really yeah. have a lot of problems. It's very true. <laughs> <laughs> what? I have a lot of problems. It's like, you know, yeah. you really do have a lot of problems. I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> On the plus side, though, I, I kind of liked having the big shaggy Michael Landon main. Uh, the only thing is, when it gets that long, it's just such a pain in the ass to manage. And, uh, you know, I just got tired of it and then trimmed it again. So, most of the time, I... Uh, Island of hair, exactly. Yeah, I mean you can see I do have the receding hairline and such, and it is a little thinner on top, but it's, you know, there's still hair there. <laughs> I don't have that problem at all. Not bald yet. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know. Whatever. Really nice head of a nice head of lettuce. Like I said, well, thank you very much. And thank you for all the kind words, everybody. Glad you liked it. Was it 2006? I thought it was 2015. I think that was the year I did the Halloween reviews. Like, of the first five. I think. I seem to recall. So now, anybody... Whenever I get around to doing the rest of those, anybody who watches those in sequence will be like, Whoa, dude, what happened to your hair? Between <laughs> Halloween 5 and 6. <laughs> it's like, well... Five years of life happened between those. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey, different game in the background. What's that one? Oh, it's Rondo of Blood. Oh, Dracula. it's Rondo of Blood. Okay, of course. We yeah, did Snatcher eventually... Snatcher was literally just going to sit there at a gold screen that said Snatcher. Oh, yeah. We <laughs> did eventually get a translation of that one, didn't we? Yeah, we did. Like I said, we had a Sega CD release, a U.S. That's right, yeah. Sega CD, um, and a, I think a 3DO release also. Okay. Was there were I, other versions. Was I yeah. ever in wrestling? Uh, nope. Can't say that I was. Not even backyard wrestling, if that's what you're wondering. Uh, we'll be back. One of my, actually, one of my friends who I play Fortnite with a fair amount, uh, Luke, Razorwire Ryan, um... He used to do backyard wrestling quite a bit. That's where he got his username from, actually. Yeah. Into, oh, um, not too much. I, I watched it a little bit back in the 80s just because some of my friends were into it. Um, but not much beyond that. Um, I would catch the odd match here and there because it would usually come on right after Saturday morning cartoons. Um, so I would see a little bit there. Um, and I, I followed some of the storylines a little bit back then, but, um, uh, yeah, this would have been back when it was still the WWF before they were forced to change it. But, um, yeah, it's all right. I mean, I, I have nothing, no issues with wrestling. I, I enjoy it for what it is, but I don't really follow it, you know. Um... Actually, funny enough, one of our regulars, Skin Slip, who's usually here for Saturday Night in Sandy, is a huge wrestling fan, and I'm sure would gladly talk your ear off about it. <laughs> <clears throat> Anyhow, I think we're done for this week, folks, so uh, we're going to bid you adieu, and um, adieu. we'll see you next time. I'm actually going to go to bed. I'm kind of on a semi-regular schedule right now so um yeah it didn't really get much done today productivity wise but we had some fun messing around in the battle lab and getting some practice in with the pc controls well i did anyway um yeah so maybe we'll uh maybe we we're gonna do some highlights today we'll probably do those tomorrow for those of you who are here on twitch uh come and hang out and chat whilst i try to be productive <laughs> Alrighty. 
Have yourselves a one. Oh, and uh, Mega Marathon on Monday as well. So we'll be playing more Fortnite there and maybe some more Spider-Man, maybe back into Star Wars, maybe some Fallout, maybe some other stuff. I don't know. I've got more games than I know what to do with. We'll play something. We'll have fun. Bring your wallets. <laughs> All right. Catch you later, everybody. Thanks for coming out. We'll see you next time. Until then, thanks for watching. Thanks for chatting. And sayonara. Pahinas. Bye.